Here is your podcast. You know, I've been doing this show nine years. In the beginning, it was great. I got to show up and just talk and leave. That was fantastic. But now Mex sends me this theme song and tells me to put my own voice in it. Lily shows up. She doesn't produce a goddamn thing. All she does is laugh, turn around, and go home. The only thing I don't wind up doing for this show is listen to it. That's your fucking job. Hey, what's happening, Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast? Uh, I d- you know what? I did it. Yeah, that's right. I did it on command. Fuck that. Uh, Lily, uh, you hear Lily Von Stupp? That's her right there. Let's all clap. Yay. Lily Von Stupp is here. Um, the weird thing is, okay, because uh, it's very difficult for her to see, as we all know. Um, so she actually left her house last week and just arrived at my place. Um, she heard that I was sick and then I, I knew that she was sick. So she's like, I'm leaving my house Wednesday morning. Hopefully I'll get to you by next week. So armed with nothing but a sled rat and a, and a stopwatch, she made her way through the valley and she found a, a, a herself here at my house now. Hi, Lily. You're lying. Maybe. A, I didn't walk to your house. What? And B, we're not at your house. Oh, oh my gosh, you're right. All of that is so true. Uh, you know, here's the thing, folks. I am. Uh, I sound a lot better, right? Don't I? I mean, last week I sounded like fucking death uh, in a fucking octagon, but now I sound like uh, I sound like me. I sound like Mike Schmidt. I, and by the way, if you think I sound like death in an octagon all the time, then maybe last week I sounded like something different. I have no idea. Maybe people there are people who might describe me like that. He sounds like death in an octagon. You got to tune into that fucking show. <laughs> I don't either, but people, I, if, I, I, I'll tell you what, if you came up with that description before I did, I love you. You're a genius. <laughs> I think we got to build a show as that now. It sounds like death in an octagon. <laughs> I'm on board with that. Uh, it is November 1st, man. We are, we are well, in, well into the holiday season. Uh, we are, our bells are jingling. Our holly is dangling. Our mistletoe is being hung as we speak. Uh, and we are all excited for the holidays to come and approach. Thanksgiving is first, of course. We've got turkey and we got a fistful of stuffing and everything and all their hobos and all your bullshit. If you're going to make that this year with your bad eye, making anything this year. yeah, I know you're going to be all locked down because you can't move. She is. I should tell you this. Uh, Lily is strapped in like Lecter. She's on a dolly. <laughs> Pacing forward is the weird. Part. She's got to lean forward too because she has a gas bubble in her face, <laughs> and uh, and it is it could burst at any time. So let's get you. Well, oh my God, it burst. The, the gas bubble is gone. Look at that theater of the mind that is brought to you, folks. Uh, so that yeah, is my fear. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I dude, I can't even imagine. Uh, well, we'll get to you in just a second in all of your trials and tribulations and your travails, because Lily and I have been spent the afternoon here discussing what's worse right now, uh, my head or her eye. We can't figure out exactly. You think so? Oh yeah. That's her vote. I don't think so. I think her eye my is clearly. Decision has been made. I had surgery. Your right. decision is still not made. It's all up in the air. Well, here's it's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a patch over my head and see if that'll work out. <laughs> Just like yours. I'll strap my head into a Dolly Lecter style and lean me forward. Uh, it's that, Okay, it's not really a dial. She's on a, a Dolly. She's on a Segway. And <laughs> she's, she's zooming all over the place, leaning forward. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah, did you never know, dude? I, I look. I th- I'm sure I've talked about it on the show before. I thought, I literally thought, segways were going to change the world. Like I, I thought that once they were invented, I heard about them, and I'm just like, cities of the future will be different. They, they will be just filled with these people rolling around on segways. It's fucking amazing. Our carbon footprint is going to go away. We're going to save the environment. All be, but you know why that didn't happen? Because people didn't want to look dumb. That's exactly why. <laughs> That's the truth. People are like, oh, man, that's a great idea. It'll totally save the environment. We can zip all over the place. It's, it takes the place of cars, and it still gets us where we're going. And then they saw the first guy on it going, meep, meep. And they went, no, no fucking way. I'm not getting near that thing. Because they are incredibly stupid. Uh, I thought they were kind of cool. You know, we, when I was writing on Starface, we were on the, on the studio lot. And uh, fuck, I, I, did I put this picture up? I'll have to put, I have to find it. We were... We were in the, the writer's room and we used to make fun of this. There was one dude who rolled around in a Segway all day long. So we just, we just called him Segway Man, like everywhere he went. And he zipped back and forth and he's going all over the studio. He's back and forth. And, uh, and one day we got him to fucking come into the writer's room. We were like, you gotta, and I filmed it. I think I filmed it or I took a photo of just him, just like him dri- just driving in. You know what it reminded me of? Because I was sitting down in the angle I took. Do you remember when Larry Bud Melman was the big man? On, on Letterman, and he, he got rolled in. It was just a yes. gigantic fucking dude, and then this Larry Bud Melman's little head at the top. God damn, what, how much of a miracle must it have been to work for Letterman back then when you could just, when anything went 
when you just came up with fucking any stupid thing in the world and they went, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Hey, the guy who lives under the stairs. Fantastic. Let's go with it. It is. That, well, that's how I thought of Conan, too. When they were like, Artie Kendall, the ghost who haunts the fucking studio, and, and he sings racist song. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Irish people shouldn't be allowed to vote. You know, you're just like, I, go find those clips on YouTube. That's Brian Stack. We met at fucking Podfest. Goddamn, Artie Kendall, the racist fucking singing ghost that haunts the, the studio from the old 20s. Jesus Christ. That and Eddie Pepitone screaming from the audience. I, I mean, fucking brilliant, brilliant stuff. You're just, I'm just jealous whenever I see those things and I wasn't a part of it because I was so happy when I was in a writer's room uh, in Starface. It was one of the, this is, I told this story. I, fuck, it, listen to me, fucking memory lane bullshit this is what happens when you just drive people around all day and cough up phlegm for a week you got nothing to bring to the table (laughs) well you know last week was a bad fucking week for me man you know that well it did (laughs) certainly uh near the weekend things took a turn but i mean uh the rest of the week uh no not at all stop your nonsense i i I was in my fucking house. When I And you guys heard I cut the intro last week and, and I sounded like, uh, you know, Death in an Octagon, as we've talked about. That's got to be the name of the show, right? Death in an Octagon. Wait, you go that route? Oh, yeah. Death in an Octagon. No, yeah, Octagon. No, you, you, did, you did it right because you got to break up the syllables. Death in an Octagon. Yeah, yeah all right, cool. Yeah. Holy. Jesse on that. Jesse, could you record that for yeah, me? Yeah, Jesse, could you? Could you but, uh, but record it as nine different people. <laughs> and then fuck four chicks and tell me about it. Um... That's Jess. That's uh, that's him. Oh my God, that dude. Uh, Rock Sugar Jess. He's our friend. Um, I'm sure he's gonna be thrilled that I talked about that on the show. Uh, that that is a guy who just he is constantly on the Mac. I mean, it, it was it was insane. Like every the girl handing out lanyards at the fucking festival. Every girl or whatever he saw in the hallway. Like, come here, Jess. Yeah, that's the guy's just he's just a walking cock with a mop on top of it. Um, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I I, en- I enjoyed being a walking cock the days when I could pull that off. Uh, Those days aren't behind you. Uh, I don't know about all that. So uh, last week was a fucking terrible week. I'm in my house and and just, uh, dudes, there, there's nothing that, that brings your own mortality into sharp relief more than uh, having a 102 degree fever for four days and lying on a chair because you don't own a bed. Oh my fucking God. Like literally... You know, my, my trunk, I will call it my upper, my, my torso, my, all of that in my head is on the chair. And then from the waist down, I'm on an ottoman. And then from the knees down, I'm just dangling. I mean, I'm just fucking hanging there. It's so fucking pathetic. And the thing is, I have a friend of mine who's like getting rid of stuff. He, he sold his place and he's go and he said to me, he goes, Hey, uh, like, here's the conversation. You, you be the guy. All right. And your line is, Hey, uh, you know, I might have a bed I'm getting rid of. Uh, would you be interested? Okay. Just go ahead and say that. Hey. Yes. <laughs> when do you oh my it? God! Yes. When do you get now? it? Now. When do you get it? Is it being delivered? No, he's he's still is uh, getting his place all squared away. It, it, this makes me laugh. I, well, I shouldn't. Um, I don't want to tell tales out of school. It's a friend of mine, and I was in his house, and uh, and I was like, "What the fuck did you do to your house?" Because this is all the realtor stuff. Like they, to show the house, they they brought in all yeah. of this stuff. Because again, he has like a distressed leather chair and some and a big TV and some nice stuff. But I mean, and a kitchen table. But he's a bachelor still, yeah. so uh, so but so they put in throw rugs and and uh and a like a fucking what's it called a pansy or a curtsy, they it. yeah yeah all that uh, like a like a fucking yeah. uh I don't even know candlesticks and shit like that yeah. whatever the fuck you know yeah it's uh, like a uh, one of those like solid crystal cubes that looks like it would have photos of your family if you cared you know what I mean <laughs> so he had all that shit in his fucking place and uh and luckily he was able to put it on the market and he sold it right away he got an offer he's waiting for it to clear. But uh, but he's literally he's like, hey man, I, I got two beds and I'm I'm getting rid of one of them. I'm not sure which one yet. And I go, I don't give a fuck, honestly. I, well, oh fuck, I'll just say it. it's Mike Siegel, and uh, because I because literally the only reason I would get a bed from Mike Siegel is just so I could sleep in a bed that Mike Siegel had been in. That's all I care about. <laughs> Hoping some of that magic rubs off on me. Hopefully, I wake up in the morning with cheekbones. That'd be fantastic. Um. And I don't even care where they are. They could be on my thighs. I, I seriously, that's fine. I, I just I want the angular, sharp features of a Mike Siegel. I couldn't care less if they were on my calves. What if they were on your ass and you just said Mike? Siegel Perfect, a Mike Siegel face. I would I would wear form fitting shorts and people would follow me everywhere. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> my ass would soon host a show about Thailand. It would be the greatest <laughs> moment of my life. I'd have the Jim Carrey like you know when he fucking did that in Ace Ventura. I would just have a Mike Siegel ass talk like that, but I would ha- I would literally my ass would host some fucking show a blooper show on TV. It'd be great. Um, so yeah, so I'm, so, but man, last week I'm just, I'm just miserable in my house alone. And that's the key word. Just fucking dude, you never feel more alone than when you're sick and alone. Seriously. <laughs> you more alone than when you're alone. 
But when you're alone, you're totally alone and you get the fact that you're alone, but you can distract yourself with bullshit. You can watch Chopped or some other nonsense. You can go on the internet and read things and go, hey, I'm not really alone. There's a whole world of people out there. But when you're laying there and your brain is literally cooking inside of your skull mm-hmm. and, uh, and you, you don't even have the strength to go like get to the bathroom where you're just like, I, I don't want to do this. I really don't. You're just laying there holding your fucking cock, like literally just laying there moaning. And, and that's... that's <laughs> That's the truth. I w- I'm not even lying. I, I, because again, I had 102 fever, and I also don't have anybody to tell me what's smart when you're sick. No one tells me what to do. Like I, because for the, you know, look, I got sick Thursday, the previous Thursday. So uh, I lost my voice when I was a part of the fucking ball game, and then I, I tried to get to see my doctor. I talked about this last week, but, uh, but nobody tells you what to do. So I had this, this fucking fever. It was like 101, and then it was 102, and 101, and 100, and then it would break. But then it would come back like four hours later. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out because I kept taking Dayquil and Nyquil. And it's, and it's just that when your whole life is just operated by orange at noon and, and blue at midnight, orange and blue and uh, orange and blue and, and orange and blue, that's it. That's all. Orange at noon, blue at midnight. Orange at noon, blue at midnight. That was my whole life for a fucking week. And usually that only takes a day or two and then it fucking all goes away. But it didn't, man. It wasn't fighting it off. And I still, but, and I still had to fucking drive. So, you know, I'm laying in my house. Uh, on the chair, like I said, trunk on chair, waist and up to knees on fucking ottoman and knees and feet just dangling. Fucking what a child. So terrible and sad. What a pathetic existence I've carved out for myself or haven't carved out for myself. But, uh, but I'm all warm and stuff from the fever. So I, I didn't know if I was supposed to be naked, like to not be feverish or whatever. But all you wanted to do was be like totally warm. I don't know the rules. Fuck. So, uh, I checked myself into the hospital and they said, you know how we're going to break this fever? Get naked. Well, I don't know. <laughs> see, that's a deal. I don't know. You see, where were you? That's why strippers never have fevers. Oh, good for them. <laughs> they give me fever. <laughs> when they kiss me, they give me fever when they hold me tight. Fever! <laughs> In the morning. Fever all through the night. Um, so, so I... I uh, so, okay, well, then maybe I did the right thing because what I did is I, uh, instead, I put on uh, sweatpants and a fucking hoodie and a shirt and I just laid there with a blanket over me and, and just fucking, okay. uh, and just got warm. The entire conversation we had earlier, I realize now is just, you had a fever dream and you're having like fever issues right now. <laughs> you think so? Yes, this is all, you have a brain cloud right now that's causing all of these things that you're feeling. It's just all left over from this fever dream for four days. You and I are the worst superhero team of all time. <laughs> Why do you say that? Brain cloud and gas bubble. I don't. <laughs> I don't see anybody being frightened of us at all. I think I think crime continues. Oh I think a crime wave will start now just because they know that brain cloud and gas bubble are on the case. <laughs> Nobody's intimidated by us. Nobody's scared of us at all. You got an eye patch. I'm just holding my heart in my hand. Blood <laughs> dripping all over the place. Trying to figure out where to put it and what to do with it. Oh, I'm sorry, half my heart. The other broken half is still in my fucking chest. Because I can't figure out how to fucking live my life. Because I know what I should do and I know what I want to fucking do. Uh, but then but then you, of course, with your eye patch, you have depth perception problems. You keep walking into my fucking terrible sense of sadness. Oh my God, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have walked into your terrible sense of sadness now for three days. You can't escape. <laughs> no. no, you're all locked up. I said it was a bad week for me last week. What do you want? <laughs> Nothing I could do about it. I'm trying. I think you're going to know what to do with the rest of your life. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, when the fever breaks, the, the levee's going to break. <laughs> if it keeps on raining, then the fever's going to break. <laughs> that's uh, Mouth Zeppelin. Um, that's right. I could do some Mouth Zeppelin for you. Uh, oh, God, it hurts. <laughs> what hurts? I don't, that, at this point, that could be anything for us. Literally, that could be anything at all for us could hurt. I don't know what it could be. It could be your eye. It could be my fucking heart, my head. Who knows? Um, brain cloud and gas bubble are on the case. That's so, the name of the show. So that, well, what was the initial name of the show? I don't care. It's brain cloud and gas bubble. There's no doubt about it. All right. Are you, are you writing it down? Or are you keeping track? Well, you can't. You can't see. Trust me. All right. It's brain cloud and gas bubble or death in an octagon. So far, we've got those are checked. Uh, so, I mean, so last week, yeah, I was, I was, uh, sick, yeah, sick and, and forced to, t- to take stock of my life. And there's nothing worse than being sick and alone because you just sit there and you go, man, I got nothing. I know. 
I got nobody. I got nothing at all. And and you can easily convince yourself that you are the least important person on earth, you know. And and, and look, I don't even have that far to go with that sort of thing anyway. <laughs> Because I, I, as I, I guess everything is either good or bad for me. That's what I'm finding out. I don't know if, if you guys have ever noticed that. Have you guys? I don't. <laughs> have you guys ever noticed that either something is really great for me or everything's fucking terrible? Is that something that comes up? I don't know if it ever does. I All right. I don't. Well, it's been nine years. I don't know if it's ever come out on the show that that seems to be the case. Sometimes that I either <laughs> think things are really fucking perfect or things are fucking never going to be good again. I don't know if you guys. <laughs> are familiar with that line of thinking, certainly not from this show. I mean, maybe other shows have espoused that sort of philosophy, but I know I have been a, done a real good job of keeping that in check. But I will tell you this, sometimes I lean that way. I do. Sometimes I feel that either things are the best they've ever been or I think that they couldn't get any worse and never will get any better. That's, but only occasionally, folks. I'm, I'm, I know it's a surprise to you to find this out from me now. Um, you know who it's not a surprise to hear? Who hears that? Lily. She's not surprised to hear that at all. Neither is Shannon. Shannon's never surprised to hear that from me. I told you there's no prouder moment than when you tell your therapist how deeply you relate to a Billy Joel song. That's never. That explains why you're in the fucking office, quite frankly. She like Literally, if she was like, why are you in therapy? And you said the Billy Joel anecdote, she'd go, yeah, all right. I totally get why you're here. That's actually a diagnosis. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it appears that you're living here in Allentown. I, this is just for my research. In the discussions we've had over the past few years, you appear to be under pressure. Dunk, dunk. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you really want to know how I feel about it, after hearing about you talk about the problems you've had in your life and with your mom, um, if that's what it's all about, good luck moving up, Mike, because I'm moving out. <laughs> I'm moving out. This probably explains why I meet Shannon in an Italian restaurant. All right, so. <laughs> you know, my my problems, and, and this is again to the problems, because, uh, you know, when everything seems to be great, I order a bottle of red. When everything seems to be terrible, bottle of white. Shannon knows immediately what kind of session it's going to be from the time we sit down at our Italian restaurant. <laughs> I want to go the other direction. That's some spicy therapy. Oh, <laughs> ah, that's a spicy at the session. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, do you get anything solved in therapy or do you just do this? Well, I'd like to talk about it on the show, but it's a matter of trust that I don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four. All right, so. <laughs> But I, I, cause I go, I went to therapy initially to try to change who I was. I needed to figure out who I was. I wanted to find out a better path. And, and Shannon said, don't go changing to try and please me. Uh, how long could I do this? I'm going to say another hour. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you know, fuck it. Let's just get drunk and drive into a tree. I'm only human. I'm going to make mistakes. <laughs> like a boxer in a title fight. Never mind. All right. So, um, thank God for MTV or that we would have a show this week. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, we have a dog. Either that's the neighbor or Eddie's home. I don't know. It could, yeah, that could be Eddie doing the dog thing. Sometimes I hear the dog and I'm like, Oh no, I'm in Lily's house, by the way, in case I haven't told you guys where I am. I'm, uh, and I, I should, and also now I just found this out. Uh, I, look, you know, I just recovered from an illness, right? Have I mentioned I was sick? Um, and then I get here and she and I are talking about whatever the hell we were talking about for the first two hours when I was here. <laughs> and we might've been doing that. We actually had our checklist. All of that was planned. We, we went down and broke down songs and had as many lyrics as we possibly could. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you're dealing with an angry young man. All right. So. God, if only our pre-show production was actually about the show wouldn't that be amazing if, if you and i actually sat down and said let's the show would be? oh my god by it by eons it'd be better it wouldn't be <laughs> <That's> funny <laughs> that's what what are you talking about of course uh so so i get i'm, I'm at lily's house now in the middle of uh, x suburb i can't say where she used to live in the oldest building in hollywood now she lives in the unmethiest building off the 405 <laughs> She, li she lives in meth lab territory. There's no doubt. I do not. Mm, 
I went online to that site, and there's like no sex offenders and no meth labs known near me. Known? Known. And by the way, that was before you moved in. I went there. Now there's one. <laughs> <laughs> now there's one it's just a picture of you in an eye patch stay away from children <laughs> all right um so i'm at lily's house and i'm here to uh you know to carve out a niche and, and do a show with you guys because she can't travel man again brain cloud and gas bubble are just fucking uh are, are we have to find our yeah dude we're old I, I thought about that honestly i swear to god because again like you made a comment where you go this whole thing started in a stripper's kitchen and now and now we're back in a stripper's fucking kitchen but Jesus Christ, like, but, but look how far we've come since then. <laughs> so untrue. So terrible. Both of us just contemplating dying. All right. So, uh, I, I just, I, we, we are, we never broke out of the primordial ooze. Like we are just, we are the podcast that's just, that's, that's not walking on land yet. We never found our legs. That's what it is. Everybody else, they're all bipeds. They're running around. They're, they're populating the earth. You and I are still in the ooze, man. Uh, trying we're certainly trying and uh, and all of you are helping us thank you so much you're all giving us a leg up we're getting a leg up oh no wait a minute is that john cougar in my therapy session he might have showed up um oh, man. yeah that would be bad probably be very bad uh so uh so i'm at lily's house and uh yeah on the way out i on the way up i saw eddie out in the in, on the drive and he and i had nice chats and he was very uh you know complimentary toward me which he did not need to be and then i came in and we set up and then lily and i had a conversation about some stuff and then uh <laughs> I grabbed, you know, I set up the microphone here and I'm on her sewing table, I think this is probably, or, or a I, I, it's a craft table. Yeah. yeah. Because there's beads and baubles and, and all sorts of stuff. And, uh, you know, you don't get this a lot when you go to somebody's house, you're, you're, uh, <laughs> you don't normally find, uh, one inch high naked photos of the person on a table, <laughs> Very true. but, but I, I have one right here and I'm washing it off right now. The 10th caller goes ahead and wins this. <laughs> Um, no, but I'm, there's like, there's a fucking like a monkey head pencil eraser and, and all, I mean, just a turbo tacky glue. I'm on the craft table folks is my point. Um, and, and I'm sitting here talking to her about whatever we were talking about before the show fucking started and I'm setting up the microphones and things. And, uh, and all of a sudden from, from the nether reaches of the house, I just hear, (coughs) and I'm like, Oh fuck. No. What is that? And she gets up and she goes in the back and she goes, Hey, uh, Rob, do you want some Theraflu? <laughs> My son is sick. Yes. I, well, okay. Well, you should have mentioned that to me because I don't know if you heard. I just had the worst week ever last you week being ill. That's what you say. But He's I am impl- not out here. He's in his room. Well, I plan to deep tongue and kiss him before I leave. <laughs> well, that would be awkward for everyone involved. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> Might win him over. Um... Throat is scratchy in that because he was out doing the purge at Universal City Walk. He was one of the he's he's a scare a character. <laughs> oh my! They don't call them that, really. They don't. He but he he's been working the mazes up at Universal. That's okay. what he does over Halloween. Is he's the characters that go out and scare people. And he's been and it's been rainy and gross out, so it's just like you know you get that that you wake up after a night of being out all night in the rain and you're just all coughing. Yeah, you got that chest full of garbage. Yeah. yeah, I get that. Well, that's how it started with me. I lost my voice, and then all of a sudden I was ill. Yeah, I don't think he's really sick. I think by tomorrow he'll have knocked everything out. Fuck, I hope so. You know why? Because he'll knock it into me. He'll have knocked it into me. I'm living here. I can't get sick. I'm not allowed to blow my nose. Think about that, too, because I saw you. um, I took you to your doctor's appointment last Friday. And I I was getting sick then. I don't know how I didn't get you sick. That makes zero sense to me. Um, Because Lily and I went to... All right, um, right, let's talk about this. I won't let people touch stuff of mine right now. I won't let people... So, I mean, I, I pretty much say to myself, I use... I use sanitizer the entire time because I can't get... Yeah, but we were in the car, which is close quarters. You know, that's how I got sick. I guarantee that's how I go. Oh, no, you're going to bury your face in skeleton pajamas? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I will tell you this because I, I got sick. I, I knew who it was. I, I guarantee you I knew who it was. It was some club kid I picked up who was wheezing like a fucking... Uh, he's in the stand. I mean, it was just like fucking awful. I'm like, oh, great. You showed up with fucking Captain Trips? Great. Um, he's just in the back seat and he's got, you know, he's got like red triangles all over his face. I'm like, oh, I am fucking ruined, man. Again, club kid with like, you know, like a fucking feather boa and a leather jacket and a fucking bandana on and like a, you know, a, an anarchy pin. Get the fuck out of my car, dude. Don't ruin my life. Wait, but wait, it, when you buy an anarchy pin, oh, you're making, hot topic? making a oh. statement, seriously making a statement. Uh, can you, let me ask you this. Truthfully, 
can would you ever be prosecuted for stealing an anarchy pin? You can't, right? <laughs> if you see an anarchy pin, just fucking lift it. Like when they named that Abby Hoffman movie Steal This Movie, and it was like everybody should have stolen that movie. And they would have said, dude, I did what the movie said so. The movie's the boss. I would have. But if I saw an anarchy pin, you gotta fucking just take it. And and literally not just like sneaky, not like, you know, me ditching a fucking check at the golden bear sneaky i'm talking like fucking grabbing the pin and palming it and then just putting it on your fucking lapel and going to walk out and they'll be like hey dude you got to pay for that and you're like da 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 and you point at it and i don't know why you give him beethoven's fifth but apparently that works <laughs> why not da 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 huge anarchist <laughs> oh my god he was ridiculous right uh that's how he lost his hearing he led that revolt in cuba against the fucking dictators and then he had to flee to germany and write a, so- a song or two um <laughs> I, some somebody needs to listen to this show and put together the back history of everything I've made up, like and just like a Mike Schmidt history book of like you know yeah you remember when Beethoven led the uprising in Cuba and then he lost his hearing and then he had to go to Germany and he write a couple of songs that's it there you go that's Beethoven for you we gotta make a Schmidtopedia where like I just have the weirdest definitions about fucking dudes uh um, yeah and by the way I throw that out there to you guys like you're ever gonna do it you remember people tried that like uh, uh there were people who tried to catalog the show there were people who. Um, but then I offended them and they left. That was one person who bailed on me. And then, uh, and then Hannah and Leanne, uh, Liana or no, not Liana, Leanne Shanks, I think is her name. Um, who I met in Toronto, Leanne and Hannah were going to, they were at one time, they were going to do like a, a compilation of the episodes. And I think they got to like episode four and said, yeah, this is fucking retarded. Like can't do it. Sat around drinking. They, they drink. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is this is rough. We need another glass of wine. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll get you a bottle of red or a bottle of white. Um, <laughs> they probably, you know what? They probably invented a Schmidt drinking game while they were listening. And they said, every time he says literally in these early seasons, we got to take a, a fucking blast. And by episode three, they were in, they had, had their livers removed for fucking cirrhosis. Uh, because I said that a lot. I think I, I still probably say it. It probably shows up occasionally. Yeah, I, I, we, another drinking game. Does. Ha, knock, knock. Who's there? Irony. Um, you know, you. there should be like a drinking game of the episodes I do alone for every time I say, right? Because right. it's terrible. Because you're not there to go for me to just like look at you, like nod. Uh, instead, I have to, the audience is you, and I'm like, huh, right? <laughs> so stupid. None of your little guys, Travis doesn't ever. Nah, they actually not there when you're not there. They're not, they don't watch the they show leave. when you're not around. Yeah. They're just like, what, Lily's not here? Bah, we got the week off. <laughs> can't, can't do it. You have some weird shit going on at your house. Uh, well, I was sick again. I was sick for a week. I don't know if I told you. Yes, I, you did. I was. You told, you told me when we were at the doctor's. Brain cloud like, and gas bubble. Take my appointment, dude. Let's talk about that for a second. So, Lily. All right. So, if you don't know, our friend Lily bunched up, and let me. Well, let's do this now. Uh, thank you, everybody out there who stepped up and went ahead and did what they could to try to help our friend Lily through her GoFundMe page, uh, which is still all uh, active right now. It's called a Stripple in Need. The link is on my Facebook. Uh, I don't think I tweeted the link. I should do that probably. And uh, Or you can go to GoFundMe and look for A Stripple in Need or My Name Mike Schmidt. I'm sure it'll come up with the campaign. And uh, and then we're still actively taking donations. You know, I asked for one uh, in the beginning because I, you know, I, I did the research. I didn't get to talk to Lily. You know what I mean? She didn't know I was doing this. And so, oh, no, I did not. Nah, that's true. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> well, I, I, well, you're just a fucking psycho at that point because she... Uh, you know, I heard initially what had happened. I, I was going to record the show because that's why she couldn't come to see me. She was in an emergency room for 20 hours. And uh, and how did you first know what was happening? Like you, Because with me, sometimes you'd go, hey, I'm having a peripheral vision thing at my house. Yeah. Like how long had you been having the symptoms of this before it actually culminated in something happening? I don't know. I honestly don't know how long this has been going on because I cannot figure out the patient zero moment of when I tore my retina. So that's because that was my next question is how did it happen? We, we don't know. No, there, there, there's a theory, which was I got food poisoning and I was violently vomiting. And at one point, my head pressure hurt so bad, I thought I was going to pass out. And you know how your eyes get bloodshot? Sometimes you can blow a blood vessel in yes. your eye vomiting. That is the only thing I can think of where the pressure in my head would have been big enough to cause something because when I got up, I just, I mean, I had tears running down my face and I was dizzy and nauseous. And, and then on Friday of that week was when I started noticing something was off, but I couldn't figure out what. 
Yeah. So I'm assuming that's what it was, but I don't know. Well, you would be with me and and in the house, and you would have eye stuff too. I mean, you had just general well, I eye, stuff. Have eye stuff. Yeah. Because my left eye is my bad eye, and I have an astigmatism in it, and I'm I I wear glasses for close up and far away. My right eye is my good eye. So, you know, there are always times where I'm like, my glasses are filthy, I can't see, I'm getting dizzy, just because I have a shitty left eye. So, you know, I mean, that that I've had forever, and when the TMJ starts, I get headaches, and I get ocular migraines in my left eye. You know, I saw a TLC tribute band, and they were weak. They, I gotta admit, they were honest. Do you know why? Why? Shitty left eye. Shitty left eye. She was eye. terrible. The other two weren't bad, <laughs> but shitty left eye. So needless to say, my good eye is my eye that got fucked up. And what happened was I eventually realized that there was an actual problem with my eye when I went to rub my left eye because it was really sore and realized I couldn't see my hand next to my face or the phone. And that's when I realized I had no peripheral vision on the right side. I'd just been overcompensating for four days because I was working and, you know, it just, I was like, wow, my shoes are high. I'm off balance. Or, you know, I didn't realize that I well, couldn't see. You, yeah, you never think that something's wrong with your head or your eyes. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? No. Uh, because the second you notice, you go, I can't fuck with this. Then I got to get oh in there God, immediately. I can't see. And then I was like, well, I wear glitter all the time. Maybe I scratched my cornea. And so, because <laughs> Hold I scratched no, my Stop. All right, we'll stop. Yes, before. but stop. Just, just the very fact that you live the kind of life that would make you go, well, maybe I just got glitter in my eye. Well, I don't. It happens a lot for performers yes. because there's cosmetic grade glitter and then there's craft glitter. And sometimes people will sell glitter that is not rounded corners. And so you will end up and you'll get a piece of glitter into your eye and it will literally get caught in and they will have to dig it out of your eye. Well, I remember yeah. in the sixties when the strippers had all of that, uh, they walked off the job because three of them died of glitter lung. Oh, shut up. <laughs> gonna punch you. Three of them died of glitter lung, which was terrible. So I literally just thought that's all it was. You right. know, I was like, oh, I just got off the flight, coming home, I'm tired, whatever. And Wait, you flew with this fucking thing? Yeah. I didn't Dude, know I your head have. could have exploded. You realize that? Yes, it could have. Yeah, my eye could have torn worse and I could have completely gone blind because of the cabin pressure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they, you don't, you can't fuck with that stuff. No. Oh my God, no. dude. So you just, you, all right, so you got food poisoning and you think that's what it was possibly. You were vomiting that's and that's, it. you burst Otherwise, it that way. Otherwise, when I was in Arizona, something happened because it was on that Sunday that I was like, ooh, I can't see. Yeah. Um, and on Monday when I came home, we stopped off at a friend's house and <laughs> there was a balloon artist in town from out of town. And we're talking in that and I jokingly said, yeah, I said, I'm having some trouble with my right eye. I either scratched my cornea, tore my retina or I have a brain bleed. Because you go on WebMD and it's like, oh, oh sure. when you can't see something. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. We and talked about that. And she goes, that's not really funny. Come here. And I'm like, oh, what are you going to do about it? You know, put a balloon in it? And she well, goes, real quick. It's like it's like when I had thrush. Remember, I, I, I thought well, I didn't have thrush. I thought I had thrush. My throat was all fucked up and my tongue was white. And I went in and it's that thing where you, you just go down the WebMD hole where all of a sudden you're like, hey, you know, I, I, I could have the flu, although I may have AIDS. I mean, quite frankly, yes, I... Yes. I could have lupus mumps, you know, and, and, and so you wind up convincing yourself. Yeah. So you told, you just, so you made a joke. You're like, I, I, I could a have joke. a brain bleed. And it's like when you smell toast and you're just like, oh, I could be having a stroke or yeah. breakfast is ready. I have yeah. no idea. So you were just fucking around. Yes. And my friend goes, come here, let me look at you. And I'm like, you know, what are you going to do? Put a balloon eye on it? Uh, you know, so she's a balloon eye. artist who wants she, to look at your head. I know her as a balloon artist. And so she's like, no, come here, let me look at you. And, and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, grab my hands. And I'm like, why? And she goes, honey, I'm a doctor. Well, before before and that. Literally, I'm like, you're a doctor? Well, but I'll tell you what, you run with such a fucking bananas crowd. It all is, right. Yeah. The the trick of grabbing the hands, that could have been any nonsense where she was going to spin you around and do -si do You have no fucking clue. And you're like, and all, and both of us run in crowds and we're like, what is this? Yes, you know what no. I mean? Whatever's going to fucking happen. I don't want to get tripped. That old thing in, the, in high school where someone would like talk to you and then a guy would kneel behind you and they'd push you over him. <laughs> like you're waiting to see if that would happen. Uh, so so when someone says to you, grab my hands and all this, yeah. you, you and again, she's a balloon artist. You're like, well, what the I, fuck? I'm laughing. I'm like, you know. But yeah, because the next thing you know, she's going to pull a playing card out of your ear and go, ha ha, your eyes are fine. You know, and you're just pissed. But then she says she's a doctor. Yes. Now again, though, with the crowd of people you run with, that could be like, you know, doctor of boobology or no. some nonsense. Well, no. The moment she said that, I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. She's really smart. <laughs> no. So she just went through some tests with me and she goes, I don't have any of my equipment with you to look at your eye, but you can't screw around with this. And I'm like, oh, come on. And she goes, that's not a joke. You could have a brain bleed or you could have a retinal detachment. 
And in your head, you're like, all right, look, I may have a retinal detachment. That's if I trust the word of the great helium. I don't know if, <laughs> if what she's saying is fine. I, I don't know if I should put all of my trust into, uh, you know, balloon Wilson here. I don't know if that's the thing to do. Latex Lonnie thinks I should go to the doctor immediately. Latex Lonnie? Really? Uh, sure. Why and are you making fun of my friends? Because, well, because you run with a fucking dangerous crowd. They're not too pretty. They're not too proud. They might be talking a bit too loud, but that never hurt no one. So come on, Virginia. One of my favorite moments in my life, in my life, was Big Chill singing that song on Thanksgiving with my brother at his apartment. Not even kidding. I, I, if, I wonder if someone asked me what joy was, that would probably be on my list. Because I had moved out. I had, I, I, well, again, like I said, it was, it, I had moved out. I had moved out. So I moved from Chicago and I moved to Los Angeles. I was, this is 86, so I'm 18. And uh, I'm, I'm living at my brother's house. This is when the era of 7-Eleven and me working there and stuff. It was my first Thanksgiving away from my aunts and my family and stuff. My first Thanksgiving is a single man on his own. And I mean, well, not on his own. I'm living on my brother's couch, whatever the fuck. <laughs> but it's me, my brother, and we lived with this girl, Mary Bailing. And, uh, and I've talked about Mary on the show here before because I, uh, she's, she was fucking ridiculously hot. She was like, like, she was high school hot who then just improved upon that. And, uh, <laughs> in high school she had like uh, a monster rack. She was a cheerleader. And, uh, it was that thing where, you know, all the other cheerleaders are like, man, they, they can really fill out a sweater. And in the other one, you're just like, oh, Christ, I feel bad for that sweater. Like, Mary shouldn't even wear a fucking cheerleading sweater because she, it like, it's sloped down. Well, you know that. You got giant boobs. So you know what it's like to wear a shirt that just, it just doesn't, it doesn't hang. It just, vomp, it goes out and you got a tabletop in front of you. Fucking amazing. And Mary was beautiful and gorgeous. And then when I moved out to LA, I move in with her and Lenny. So then she's, you know, walking around in boy shorts in our apartment because it's her fucking apartment. And I'm just like, ah, I remember you in high school. I ruined a rug because of you. <laughs> Um, and several other people. <laughs> I can't lie. Carrie Kyden and Michelle Dwanch and everybody else. Oh, just name Look, everybody else so made appearances. You know, well, I don't mind saying Carrie Kyden because I can't find her. I actually tried. <laughs> like it was one of those things on Facebook where you're like, well, I wonder what you know what that person's doing. Like fucking five years ago or six years ago. I'm like, well, I wonder what happened. And you can't. There's no record of her. She doesn't exist. All I have is the memory of her with her fucking legs crossed in front of me and her each uh, vagina lip hanging out of each side of her shorts. Fuck. All right, so. How do you how do you not <laughs> how do you fucking not because i can remember her talking to me and her face was beautiful she was dating jesse lopez and i always always fucking jealous of it but she she just she was like a burnout chick but she but she didn't realize how gorgeous she was and she had a stunning face huge big boobs and uh she was a, she was tiny with big tits and uh, literally i could not at, that's that's wheelhouse Great ass, big tits, really short, like tiny, five feet tall, and perfect face bur- with a great smile. Jesus God! All right, so I gotta shut the fuck up. So, so Carrie was. We were outside of the park district, and she was sitting on the wall. I've told the story on here, and she had her her knees pulled up under her chin, with her ankles crossed over one another, but she was wearing shorts, and the shorts had just dug in for fucking battle. So she's talking to me, and I'm talking to her. And I'm just glancing down and you can see that literally her just her her vagina's like, you know what? I wonder what shorts taste like and just just fucking like totally oh, you're Audrey toed the shit out of her shorts. Audrey. And I was like, Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna remember this when I'm fifty and talk about it on a show nobody listens to. I can't fucking wait. <laughs> this moment is seminal. And I mean that in a double fashion, if you know what I'm talking about, baby. I mean that is a seminal moment in my life, and it was a seminal moment in my fucking jeans. Uh, so anyway, uh, but truthfully, I then moved to LA and, uh, I lived with Lenny and in his apartment and with Mary and for Thanksgiving, Scott Pauly came over. He was another guy from Bolingbrook and he happened to live in San Diego. So Scott came up and it's me, Scott. And, and here's the thing. Scott Pauly was ahead of me in school. Lenny was like eight class of 83, but Pauly, I think was class of 82, maybe even class of 81. He was like Pat Conway and those guys. So he was older than me. You know, so I knew him in school as just an older guy you didn't talk to because you might get punched. Who the fuck knew? But then in, his, in Lenny's apartment, we were all equals because we all lived out. You know, we were all gr- we grew up. You know what I mean? Even though we really didn't. Yeah. So it's Scott and Mary and Lenny and me. And we're setting the table for Thanksgiving and we're cooking in the house. And, and we had a big fucking boom box, like a giant boom box with cassettes. And that song came on. Uh, Only the good die young. 
And right when it came on, Scott Pauley's just like, oh, yeah. And then it starts, and we and they started singing it, come out, Virginia, don't. And we all started singing. Like all four of us, as we're setting the table and we're make, making potatoes and we're cutting turkey, and we kept rewinding because we had one of those boom boxes that you could just go, and it would rewind to the beginning of that fucking song. I think we played it eight times in a fucking row. A big chill moment right It was there. the best, we yes. Yeah, and it was fucking yeah, joy. It was unbelievable joy. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, I was 18. I didn't have any fucking glory days yet. I'm 50. I still don't have any fucking glory days. Not true. You're telling one right now. Well, this for me, yes. <laughs> Everybody has small moments like that that mean a lot that's to them. All anybody has. Yes. So that's, that's what I'm. All we all have are little small moments that we remember. Right, and you never. And but you just said to me, how do you remember something like that? Fuck, I, I'm never going to forget that. I won't forget that moment. I won't forget Kerry Kyden. I won't forget any of them. I mean, look, Kerry Kyden has nothing to do with Thanksgiving, quite frankly, <laughs> unless you're serving roast beef. But I mean, oh, other than that, it's just fucking fine. Oh, really? Okay. Um. Hey, look, I love vaginas. They're beautiful. Like, ridiculously, unbelievably beautiful. They are. Did yes. you go to the big art show here? There was a vagina show? Yeah. No. Yeah, it was all the plastic casts of all the vaginas, and there was an entire plaster wall of vaginas. All right, look, I get that. If there's a plastic cast and a plaster wall of vaginas, but do you spritz them with a squirt bottle before the show starts? No. Why not? Like, the like just for a little, like, a little sheen, a little moist vagina? Oof. No. You should. So, anyway... <laughs> so so anyway so that song i don't even know how we got into that fucking song but that was like one of the moments of uh a, a, literally a moment of pure joy that i would imagine uh, i could talk about because i felt free i felt grown up i felt like i was i was part of something and being accepted by older kids and older people and just and being sort of a man it was just odd i, I don't know how to explain it but i will always forever associate that song with that moment um so you were what you think being a grown-up is you should talk to Shannon. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go have a, a session with Shannon about you. I, I, uh, I mean, yeah, you might have to. Yeah, she'll be thrilled. She'll make some extra money on me. Um, I'm actually seeing her twice this week. I, I don't blame you. Last the week, fever, last week was rough. Fever was rough. Last week was rough. So, um, Your dreams are, are scary, <laughs> and they don't go away. Uh, but yeah, so I, I again, we've talked on this show. I don't know what it means to be a grown up. I, I she yeah. thinks it's funny to me that she, to her, like we've 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 made real progress. I mean, yeah, we, I, I, I mean, I could. I know you have. I've known you. Well, you've made amazing progress. And I could go into it. I won't bore you with it. But I mean, I, I uh, you know, I used to think being a grown up meant you could just do whatever you wanted whenever you wanted. That was what meant being a grown up meant. But actually, it means quite the opposite. You yeah. know, and and I'm still learning how to do that. You know what I mean? I still want what I want. And I still want to get it and take it. And even even if it's maybe not, you know. And hug it and squeeze it and call it George. <laughs> <laughs> or break it into eight even squares and eat those one at a time uh, four times a day. Um, oh, issues. Yeah, I got them. I just found out you had to unfold a towel before you leave. I have, I have a whole new. We've talked question. about that on here. And you know what? Uh, a listener just said to me that they have the same thing. And I'm trying to remember who the fuck it is. Fuck, somebody wrote me. Please out them on the show as being on CD. <laughs> no, fuck, they're on board with me. It was like, because uh, I told the story about how uh, if there's a cord that's folded, I have to unfold it before I leave the house. Or if there's a towel and it's, it's lumped up, I have to lay it flat because the towel doesn't want to be all uncomfortably bent all over itself before I split. You know, and, and this person was like, I get exactly what you're talking about with not throwing Kleenex in the toilet because it, that's not where it goes. It, it would be sad if it went there and it would go visit a bunch of like monsters and all these sad people because the toilet is like for toilet paper. Like all the toilet paper would beat up the Kleenex if you threw the Kleenex in the toilet. Oh my God. I know it sounds weird. It's crazy, right? But like if you took a, like a, when I drink a bottle of water. Make a decision. Just make a decision. When I drink a bottle of water, yes. I, uh, I have to put the cap back on. I have to crush the bottle and put the cap back on it because they live together. I don't want to take them to the junkyard and have to experience the recycling process alone and separate and thinking about where they went away from one another. That cap and that bottle have been together since the beginning of the process, so they need to stay together till the end. They're essentially married or whatever the fuck. They were, they were made in two different plants, and, and they were forced to come together. Well, they were happy to come together. No, I don't think they were. No, there's no arranged marriages in the world of bottled water. I think this entire bottle is upset that this is keeping it down. No, because that's plastic and plastic that's all from the same source, and it knew itself but before it was turned into... Before it was turned into caps and bottles, it knew itself at the big plastic house. You are so weird. And then they put it together because they were like, you, you don't think, look, and I, Crystal Geyser is a humane company. You don't think they talk to the caps and the bottles to find out who's compatible? Of course they do. So then they go ahead and put those together and then that cap matches that bottle and that's, you know, that's your, that's your lobster. You're if, only as, seeing her twice this week? As Phoebe would say. <laughs> so only that, twice. 
So that bottle and that cap have been married together. So if I drink and if I lose the cap, I can't throw the bottle away until I find the cap. I need to know exactly where it is. So I try to keep the caps and the bottles close together. And then when I turn them into recycling, again, they have to go through the process together because they bend it from the jump. So why wouldn't they see that out, out to the end? So there was a cord that was folded today. And uh, <laughs> Lily <clears throat> goes, here's what you do. And she bent the cord underneath the fucking thing. I go, no. I didn't bend it. Well, well the cord I was bent. It. Yeah, but then he's smushed. No, no, then he's all smushed underneath the fucking hard drive. He's like, ah, get that thing off me. Who are you talking to? Of course I do. So you got, uh, so, so this chick comes up. She puts a balloon down your throat and says that you're sick. Yes. Uh, latex Lonnie is like. What she like, really said to me was, I really think you need to go to the emergency room right now. And I said, no, I don't. I can go to the doctor on Friday. And she goes, no. I would really be more comfortable if you go to the emergency room right now. And I go, so as a doctor, you're telling me I should go to the emergency room right now. And she goes, yeah. Yes. But as a balloon artist, you're making me a cowboy hat. <laughs> it's very true. So Eddie and I drove to our house from their house. And I'm like, do you think I should go to the emergency room then? And he goes, Lily, a doctor told you should go to the emergency no, room. No, You said, Eddie, do I think I should go to the emergency room yet? And he went, ruff, 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 uh, and then he said what he said, which is? We're going to the emergency room. And I said, no, I'll wait. And he said, we really need to go to the emergency Good room. Good for him, man. Yeah. You know, because you are someone who, uh, you I know. I push through shit. Well, you and I have talked about it. I mean, yeah, yeah you're fucking, you're, your knee is backwards and you're sitting there like, dude, I, again, <laughs> I wrote this in the description for the, for the GoFundMe page. But it's the truth. You've literally been sitting in my house and just tears started running down your face because your back or your knee locked up and you can't move. And you uh, and I've said to you, I'm like, well, what can I do? And you're like, nothing, nothing. And uh, look, by the way, that's a really good match for me. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you, as a guy who likes doing nothing for people and doesn't want, as a guy who doesn't have a savior complex and wants to get in and make everything right for everybody he's ever met and wants to swoop in and make sure that you're okay at all times, hearing nothing you can do for me, that's, that's entertaining. So I will sit there and she will just have to slowly unfold her leg or move her back or stand up because and then you hear that or you yeah hear that, and you're like oh my god yeah but you're like good you're that that's I'm what like, you're oh, looking that's, for that's a good noise actually that's a good noise yeah because you you after years of of burlesquing and and every other thing and being folded um, into different positions for a living i've always yeah. physically worked i've yes. never i've never had a desk job where i pushed paper i've always been a physical person yes and now it's caught up to you a little bit oh yes so Eddie says we need to go to the doctor. Good and again, good for him because you are the because you are a person who's made a physical living. And also, I'll get into your head a little bit here. You don't like help. Um, no, I do not. No, you you do not at all like help. Like you, I don't know. Well, I don't know if that's because you think you're now going to be beholden to people. I don't know what it is because I mean I, I I get a lot of that too where I. I get some shame and I, I don't know why I can't pick myself up and fix myself. And I wonder why people, I have to rely on them. It, it does occur to me in that way. How does it do it for you? Um, my pathology of not having an easy time asking for help is um, if you can do something, just do it. Should we have you on the microphone? No. People will bitch. Well, no, but my pathology is if you can do something, just do it. And so I just do it. And then I do stuff and don't realize that I'm pushing myself too hard because you just do it. That's what you do. If something needs, you know, if I'm at a show and it's a friend's show and I see that their door person didn't show up, I literally go, do you need a door person? I know. I, that, and I, again, it's, I'm, re, I'm cannibalizing a lot of the, the, the copy I wrote for the GoFundMe page. But in all the time I've known you, you've never asked me for anything. <clears throat> That's the truth. You've asked me to punch up some work. Like yeah, you'll, you'll write, go over some stuff you'll write bits you or you'll write that. reviews yeah. for things and you'll say, Hey, do me a favor. Can you give this a once over and tell me what you think should be done? And I will happily do that. Or you needed help moving. And I not so happily did that. Now you were amazing <clears throat> when I moved. Well, yes, but, but also, but I'm, I know who I am as a guy and you're just like, it, there comes a time where you go, well, you got to do this, dude. Yeah. Like you can't, as much as you want to go, no, man, I got to have some popcorn. But, you know, fuck that. But you got to help. I called you specifically and asked. I simply just put out, can anybody help? I need help moving. Yes, and I couldn't the first wave because yeah. I was out of town. I was in Wisconsin. But then I was home when you needed help the second time, and I was like, I'm doing this. But no, you're <clears> right. <throat> I didn't call you up. I just put <clears> out <throat> and said we could use help if anybody wants to and just kind of hoped that somebody would have gone, hey, I can do that. 
I did. It's very hard for me to call someone up and go, hey, can you do this for me? Exactly, so, as it is I'm for me. It's very hard with that because normally I can do it. And I'm one of those people who if I don't know how to do it, I want to learn how to do it so I can do it. Because I find it fascinating to know how everything works. But you know what's funny? You taught me this, and I talked about it a little bit about, I think I may have talked about it on the show here. Um, when I was trying to get stuff done for PodFest, and I'd switched from just being me to being Jess and the guys from Rock Sugar. And I was going to write them a note. And fuck, I don't know. If, I've told people this story, but I don't know if I've told it on the show, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself. Um, I went to write a note to the people at PodFest, and I was like, hey, look, I'm, I'm really sorry about this, but it turns out I have people that are joining me so I, if you can do it I need some mic stands and I, I was telling Lily this and she says what are you doing I said well I'm, I'm writing them a note and she's like no you're not you're like why are you apologizing for making your yeah, show why better are you apologizing and begging for mics? yeah she goes you're the talent give you fuck mics. that give yeah. get the microphone tell them what you need you just simply say here are my techniques Lily said as a, as a producer the thing she fucking hates is a note from someone going hey look I'm sorry but my music changed a little bit and this is going on and Lily's just like just fucking tell me what you need and we'll do it yeah just and that's no nonsense, and that's who you are as a person. You know what I mean? So If you're going out of your way or doing something that is inconvenient, it's always great to say, hey, can you do this, please? Or I'm sorry, I have to make a change. But, but you don't have to go, hey, I'm sorry, can we possibly, is it all right if we, there's no, there's no need. It's like, hey, I'm sorry about this, can we make this change? Yeah, but I always live in the deathly fear that people are going to go, oh, you're not worth it, goodbye. And again, that's one of the reasons I'm having two sessions this week but and whatever, I'm sure. You're going to think that sometimes, but those aren't the people you want in your life. You want the people in your life who go, that's not a huge change. Awesome. Let's do this. It'll make a show better. True. But to me, I, I don't want, I don't know what legwork I need to do to figure out who is the one person and who is the but other. you'll never know that till it happens. Right. So it's yeah. better than to come in quiet and come in soft. Well, it's always better to not make waves answer things on time and do things um you know the, the people that annoy me are the ones that are constantly asking and constantly you know just anything that can make drama there's no need to make drama if you do need to ask for help you simply just ask for it but you will never ask for help it's hard but there are times and i have and i'm you know we need to do this and i need someone to help i will do that when i absolutely have to but it is very hard for me it's driving me crazy right now. I can't do my own laundry. I have four pairs of underwear left. And I'm like, who am I going to ask to do my laundry? Because that is such an intimate, personal thing. And then, of course, one of my friends said, you should just put it out on the internet. $500, come do Lily's laundry. Yeah. <laughs> Pay me and come do my laundry. Well, I'm still reeling from the you wear underwear disclosure. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that at all, honestly. Well, because when I was eight years old, someone once said to me, a boy, if you don't wear underwear, bugs will crawl in there. Whoa. And it like traumatized me. And I was like, bugs can crawl in my vagina. And I literally laid in bed that night thinking, well, why don't they crawl in its butt? Mm. That, well, he should have bugs in his butt. I'm like, well, maybe vaginas don't close the way butts do. I don't know. Which again is why I don't think you should be getting any type of sexual education from the street we should have sex ed when you're eight years old so that boys can't say to you bugs will crawl in your butt and you have a fear of never wearing underwear you know what i mean or not wearing underwear it's oh god youth <laughs> well after years of research <laughs> i think i can speak to the closing differently issue bugs in their issue have you ever found one i will need a squirt bottle to get a sheen on there first <laughs> that's another thing you get a sheen on there and then the bugs slip they can't climb in they get no purchase they get no traction most of the time i don't wear underwear but i, I do sometimes i love that you have my bed bug story but it's a vagina bugs story <laughs> <clears throat> literally slept i lost sleep over lice i lost sleep over bed bugs i was worried about it and and uh we had literally the same age everything we found out about it but uh you were you found it out as a way of a verbal sexual assault <laughs> vagina what the fuck i mean literally and, and again at, at eight or nine however old i was i was like who do i ask about this that is an adult person and then i was like you don't ask anybody can can cockroaches crawl in your in your vagina ride this one out yeah i'm like i'm gonna go with that doesn't happen and you know but it was a good week of you know where does this kid even pull that i don't know I, look i watched the same sesame street everybody else did <laughs> I don't recall Cockroach in the Vagina ever being the uh, dainty song. I never, I, I never heard a ditty about it, quite frankly. It was, it was uh, Groucho. Groucho? Could have been. Groucho was not on. Actually, actually, you know what? I think it was on Electric Company. Oscar the Grouch. Yeah. Groucho. Oscar the Groucho? Could have been him. Oh, my God. 
I actually, you know what? I believe it was on Electric Company. One of these things just doesn't belong here. One of these things are kind of the same. Yeah. And it just had a picture of a vagina, and it said, you know, one of these things doesn't belong here. And it was, uh, it was a cock and a, a vibrator and a speculum and a cockroach. <laughs> it's time to play our game. So. Um, so anyway, yes. So the whole point is. You don't ask for help from anybody well, ever. I'm trying to figure out who to ask to do my laundry because Eddie's going to have to do all of his laundry. I can't lift anything over five pounds for two months. Eddie has, it literally has two pairs of overalls and eight scrunchies. That's all I've ever seen him wear. That's all I've ever seen the dude wear. He has 4,000 t-shirts. I kid you not. Good Lord. Yeah. But, but again, it's, you know, and again, I will ask a friend to help and I will get my laundry done. And, you know, I still haven't unpacked from Arizona from the 12th of last month. The 12th of never. Yeah. So she, the bottom line is, again, you, you don't ask for help. No. You don't. You're just not that kind of person. So I, that's why I... When I heard about what happened, I was like, well, I'm doing this. I mean, it just it just seems to make sense. Uh, and like I said, I've talked about it here on the show. You guys know my what I did. And we, we set up the GoFundMe page. And again, it's still open if you guys want to go ahead and kick in some dough. Because I asked for 5000 initially. And uh, and because I did I did the research in the, in in my apartment after because I didn't you know you just told me you're going for surgery I didn't know what the fuck was up so I did the research they said you'd have to be immobilized for two weeks and then you'd have two months of recovery after that so I knew you were fucking wiped out you weren't going to be able to do the teas and that's your main source of income all these different things because as I've mentioned to people you know L- Lily when she does the teas man she she doesn't just show up and talk you know she's got to book the act she's got to talk to the bar and be in constant conversation with every fucking idiot they got working there she's got to go flyer she's got to do everything she can to try to get people in the door because that's a dime that she's going to make yep. um and with all of that time off i asked for 5000 and you guys went fucking bananas i think we had that in a day uh you guys stepped up and uh, magic people stepped up and burlesque people stepped up and did everything they could and and again as always as i've found in the past when my car fucking ate it uh, there are people out there who want to help you. They're just waiting for the opportunity. There are people who think to themselves, "Hey, fuck! I, you know, I haven't, I haven't helped that dude yet. I like that guy. I should do something for him." And that's how it is with Lily. I mean, she had to be shown even, even sheer money, you know. And obviously, she needs the money to pay her bills, but she needed to be shown the love and respect that's out there for her in all of these communities, our community, the podcast community. Because as I've said to you guys, this show became infinitely better when she arrived. Uh, I loved doing it with Eric. You know, I was learning who I was and learning what to do. And hey, if I'd have done it with Eric the whole time, um, it would be a different animal. I mean, would I have found my footing like I did with Lily? I don't know. I can't say that I would. I can't say that I wouldn't have. But would I have been comfortable enough to talk for three fucking hours and go ahead and spin off? Because Eric stifled himself from laughing. And that was just his choice. And I got it. I understood yeah. it. Because at the time, he felt like, you know, well, I'm not part of this show. I'll just be in the background working the knobs. Well, I, I encouraged Lily to fucking you know, laugh because I needed it. I, I, I want to be funny. That's the whole fucking point. Yeah. And I mean, I can do this show without her. But what's the fucking point? Hey. Well, I, I'm seriously, I have done it. I have. <laughs> But you guys, our community, you you know how valuable <laughs> she is to this enterprise. Fucking invaluable, quite frankly, to this enterprise. And I needed magic people. I needed burlesque people to step up as well because that's the thing is, you know, I hear the, the dark, seamy side of burlesque quite a bit about uh, people who do this or people who do that or people who are, are being difficult or people who aren't doing the best that they can. Well, you hear the work side of it. You well, of course. the business side of it. Yes, but you... always the hard part. Right, and you, and that's the like with comedy when I'm trying to get a hold of theaters and trying to book myself and all the that kind of shit. Industry side of anything is boring. Yes, so but I needed you to see that there was more than that because you knew that every Monday when you'd go and you'd oh, perform yeah. in the show. But it doesn't matter. It's easy to forget Tuesday morning, like I forget Wednesday morning when we finish recording, or Thursday morning when the show comes out. If I don't hear from people that the show is great, did the show exist? Yeah. Is it in a void? Did it go anywhere? Did it touch anybody? Did it move anybody? Did anybody ever laugh at anything I said? Well, it's you know. Hard because we're live medium so when you put that out to the world and you don't get immediate feedback it's like standing on stage and the audience not laughing right you know it doesn't help when someone comes up 20 minutes later after the show and it's like you were really funny and it's like well why didn't you laugh then yeah that would have been cool if you were there in the moment yeah so but it is it is weird to put it out into the world so i needed you to know how much you're loved you know that was the thing is i wanted you it wasn't even about getting money i wanted you to get to see the outpouring from people who care about you and wanted to make sure that you were better and take care of you in your moment of need. That's really what is the great thing about GoFundMe or all these things that are set up. They're set up to help people who need help. And not only that, but to show them 
that they matter. It's like everybody's own It's a Wonderful Life George fucking Bailey moment where people come in and just, you know, Mr. Martini dumps out the fucking jukebox change and everybody just goes, hey, you know what? I got five bucks. I can give that to you because you're fucking great. And, uh, and it's a really an honor and, and a privilege to have that experience. It, it is weird, and I will tell this story. Um, I wrote... It's, it's okay. Well, I, it, you, it's okay to you, but to people listening, they're just like, fuck, I can't hear her. All right, I'll do it. I'll get on the mic for a minute. You have to take your headphones out, I think. No, you're good. So I, I wrote online, and I said, um, I'm going to cry. <laughs> what? Because it's overwhelming. I wrote online, and I said... Uh, it's going to be really rough for the next two months, and if you can do me a favor and buy a t-shirt to support the show, or buy a ticket to support the show, or buy some merchandise for the Hollywood Burlesque Festival so that it can still happen, it would really be awesome. And the next morning, I'm going into surgery, and I'm really sad, and I, I look at Eddie, and I said, I think I'm going to have to cancel the Hollywood Burlesque Festival, because... I said, I won't have credit left on my credit cards to buy the things that need to be paid for and then wait for the money to come in to pay for it. I said, I will have no cash flow. It will be impossible for me to put this festival on. And uh, Eddie said to me, I need to show you something. And he showed me what you did. And there was money in it and it was completely overwhelming. Because at that moment, as I was getting ready to go into surgery, I went, it's going to be okay. It's, it's, it's going to be okay. And it was, it was a pretty amazing moment to know that that many people care. When I was talking with my friend Scott about it, I said, I have a really hard time accepting help. And I have a really hard time, you know, knowing that people support what I do. I have a Patreon page. I have a few people who support me monthly who just say, hey, you're really good at what you do and here's 10 bucks a month. Keep doing what you do. You know, pay your gas bill with it so that you know you have stuff that you, and, and it meant so much to me, but to stand here and go, all of these people have rallied around me is really hard for me. And what Scott said to me was, um, it's the social currency you build. It's the people who support you and know you and love you and when the time comes and it really matters, they're there for you. They don't need to buy you a Christmas present to tell you they love you. They don't need to do those things. But when the time comes, they're like, hey, things in my life are better because of that person. Let me make their life better right now. He goes, you've done it for how many people? How many fundraisers have you done? How many? And I just kind of went, I have some really good friends. And uh, you're one of them, Mike, because without you, I don't, I would not have put it up. Oh, I know. I would not have asked for money. I would not have, you know, and not that I didn't need it, not that I couldn't use it, not some simple sense of pride, but I would have felt like I had to work for it specifically instead of realizing that I've worked for it for the last 13 years. I've worked for it every day I come here, that it's okay for people to go, hey, here's something extra. Here's a bonus for the cool shit that you do. And that that's the thing that I learned the most from this is that um, – it's okay to let people just care. And I laugh because you say it all the time. Everybody cares. I didn't used to say it. I know. <laughs> well, it took, a, it took one of yours to make, pe to make you realize that. By the way, I, I had no idea you were going to talk for that long. Oh, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Uh, Cut it all out. Okay. And, and also, by the way, I don't, I don't know if you guys know this. Um, uh, she was told by her doctors, you absolutely cannot cry <laughs> because it will ruin the gas bubble. That's and then Brain Cloud true. will have to work the streets by himself. That is not true. I'm allowed to cry all I want. <laughs> so, well, good. I'm glad. And, and that's, what, you know, that's what I wanted it to be. I wanted you to see, like I said, not only that you were getting cash, but also that people loved you and that everything was going to be okay. But it made me realize. We did a show a month ago, It's Going to Be Okay. And you said to me, It's Going to Be Okay. So no, no, inside you, it's going to be okay. It is. I yes. know it is. Mm -hmm. I know that this is just a temporary thing. I mean, watching, you don't know what it's like to have somebody come to your house and read you your emails and send emails out. Red was sitting here with me, and at one point I go, you are much nicer than I am on emails. And so she goes, by the way, Lily says I'm too nice, so here's a curse word, turd. And she said, <laughs> oh, and I just started laughing. I mean, you don't, you don't realize what it's like until people do things for you that you can't do. 
you know, maybe I should, uh, I should hit myself in the eye and get people to return my emails. <laughs> I know there's people out there now that are thinking, hey, I got to return this guy's email. Uh, <laughs> this guy's never fucking written me back. I, oh, ow, 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 my eye. Somebody come over and type. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want this. No, I agree. I, I, well, I've had, because I've had, uh, I've, I've scratched my cornea twice. Yeah. I and, mean, but you know what I mean? You just, it's like, oh, there's just something wrong and there's nothing they can do for it. Right. There really isn't. They give you drops and you wear an eye patch. When like, you scratch oh. your cornea, it's fucked. It's again, yeah. it's, it's the bed bugs of diseases because they're just like, here, do this. And you're like, well, can't you, just, is there a magic pill or something? Nope. nope. It's just time and fucking hope. Yep. Um, so you went in and you went to the doctor and he, he, he saw you and it took 20 hours. You said you were in the emergency room Everybody back and forth. Room and for 30 hours. Jesus the Christ. The second emergency room. The first emergency room, they didn't have the trichometer, I think it is, to look into my eye to see. And so they were like, we can't really figure it out. And so they sent me to my primary care doctor who was like not available. So I saw an internist who was like, uh, I deal with internal medicine. I can't fix your eye. I'm a veterinarian. I don't know yeah. why you're here. So I literally got a handwritten note to go to the eye clinic emergency room at the at the hospital. And when I went in there, I had to see their first doctor, then the student doctor, then the other student doctor. Then I got an ultrasound on my eye, which nobody should ever have to go through that. See, here's your problem. They gave you a handwritten note to go see those other doctors. Well, your eye was all fucked up. You couldn't see. It said, <laughs> give this chick the runaround. That's what the note said. But, I, you know, I went through 11, 12 doctors. By the time I finally got... 12 yes, angry men. You have a torn retina and we need to do an emergency surgery right Two tears, now. right? Yeah. yeah. And I said, I can't do surgery right now. I've been up for 32 hours sitting in your emergency room. I will have a heart attack if you cut into my eye without general an anesthesia right now. Because they wanted to do it awake. Uh, and I said, there is n no way. That sounds like Dario Argenta bullshit. Like, who the fuck wants to do eye surgery while like, you're awake? Are you Beethoven in the background and ruin it for me? Wait, they're going to play Beethoven? From A Clockwork Orange. Oh, fuck. Oh, I was going to say, he went to Cuba and he stopped an embargo and then he wrote a couple of songs. Is that Beethoven? You were looking at me like that. Yes. Okay, just making sure. I was, when you referenced him, I was like, I can't believe he came up again in the same show. So I, Is this the same Beethoven who went and stopped the uh, the revolution in Cuba yeah. and then had to go to Germany and write a couple of songs? Yeah. All right, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> that dude. Yeah. So I just, I, I finally got to him and he's like, this is the surgery. It has a 70% recovery. It's been more than 48 hours since you since we know the tear happened. It's been 100 it's been 100 hours now, so the recovery may be not as good. This one has a 70% recovery, but if we put you under general anesthesia, that has about a 90% recovery, but it will be longer away. And I finally looked at him and I go, "What would you do right now?" See, that's a really good speech to get when you haven't slept. Oh, when yeah. they're giving you all these mathematical choices to save your eye. Literally, <laughs> hey, hold on. Like, but I said to him, I go, you know, I had surgery behind my ear to remove a cyst and I was not knocked out. And I heard the scraping and the cutting and all of it. I said, I couldn't, I wanted to vomit on the table. And he's like, well, then let's bring you in first thing in the morning. You can go home, get a couple hours rest and we'll bring you in for the surgery. And I was like, you're going to have to bump somebody. And he goes, it's okay. And I was like, but, but they've been waiting for their, and he goes, oh my you God, need surgery. Yeah. What did Latex Lonnie tell you? I, you need to get your I eye know, fixed, like Eddie, pronto. You know, and Eddie just grabbed my hand and is like, we'll get through it, it's okay. Just, you know, so we scheduled it for the next morning. I came home, slept for two hours, and worried about being homeless. <laughs> Lily, grab my hands. Yeah. I have to say this. Your eye? <laughs> <laughs> This is what a normal eye looks like. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> this is your eye. They <laughs> text Lonnie on the case. She, so she saved my eyesight. Yeah, definitely. You know, she did. And I'm very lucky because the tear is at the top of my eye, so I I'm not face down for the first two weeks. I have still have to sleep face down. Right. Um, but I mean, it could have been so much worse. I don't know how much of the peripheral vision I will get back. By the time I saw the doctor, there was more than there was when I first realized it, Yeah. which means the tear had expanded. There were actually two tears and there's a pinhole, which I still don't understand what that means. That's no good. Um, they fixed it. Good. Yeah, they I went think, and took care yeah. of it. Yeah. And now you're recovering. Yep. And uh, I took Lily to the doctor. 
for her follow up. This is when you know again I was all fucked up sick, and then I picked her up, and then we. Uh, that was my one week, right? Yeah. It was one week when you looked at me, and you had a bad eye and a patch on your patchy. Um. So. She, I had to go and. Uh, yeah, I'm an idiot. I, I had it's to take her. Shit. It's just dumb. Your brain works so stupid. Uh, no, your brain works so stupid. Thank, well, thankful, thankfully, it's working. Thankfully. I don't know if you heard. Last week was a bad week. It was not working at all. It was. Well, it was working. It was working, but it was working in one solid direction. Last it was week. Working against you. No, it's. I don't know about all that, I but do. it was. I do. Your it, brain is working against you. No, my brain is is. Uh, he's working for it goes me. Goes to extremes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god they can't take my laughter they can take my eye they cannot take my laughter my sense of humor is here to stay so we uh i took her to the doctor on friday and i had to pick her up here in uh in meth town and uh <laughs> from the oldest building in Hollywood to meth, to meth town. town. So I, I don't know if I had to, and again, I had no idea what was happening. I don't know if I had to carry her. I don't know if she was in a, you know, because she's on the dolly now, leaning forward. I don't know if that was the deal. <laughs> <clears throat> but I get her in the car and we're talking and she's she has to lean forward, basically uh, duck and cover style. Yeah. You know, she got her, got her head between her knees and we're talking. Literally elbows on your knees, hands on your face, face down has to be has to it wasn't be. like for comfort nope. has to do that because the gas bubble in her eye otherwise would move backwards or uh, pop and the pressure it was ridiculous and this is you know it's a couple days to push right against the cornea so that it pushes against the retina and pushes it and keeps it in place yeah this is right wow. after the surgery so she was really in a tender spot so i grabbed her and then uh you know so she can't look up she can't go ahead and see anything. She's got to look down at the floor of the car. So we get in the freeway and I get to downtown LA and she's like, yeah, you're going to go and go into this underpass and then there'll be a sign that says emergency and you'll turn right. And, uh, and then proceeded to be an Abbott and Costello routine that would rival who's on first because I would go and drive and there was no overpass. And I would, I, I was, you know me again, I'm writing letters to producers saying, I'm sorry, I need a microphone for fuck's sake. <laughs> So Lily's got her face down, and I feel bad that she feels terrible and she's sick, and I'm trying to do her a favor, but I cannot find this fucking place to save my goddamn life. I've never been there because, first of all, her hospital's in Mexico. That doesn't fucking help. I know what. Jesus Christ. It's literally, I mean, they did her eye surgery in the back of a fucking taco truck. I mean, it was just grim. <laughs> like, literally, you can show up and go, yeah, I need two Langua tacos and a retina. Can you bust that out for me? <laughs> they do. And they did. They fucking took care of it. So we're down in fucking Mexico. I'm driving around. There's fucking mariachis crossing the street. There's a dude on the street corner wailing about the Dia de los Muertos flowers. I mean, it's just fucking awful. And I keep missing the turn. And it's just, hey, kids, look, Big Ben, Parliament. I mean, I'm just <laughs> spinning around. And she keeps going, where are you going? Where? Because I, and look, Lily and I have the kind of relationship. Well, Lily and I have the kind of relationship where she will yell at me. And uh, she pretends that she's I not yelling. Yell because I'm deaf in my left ear. Fine, I'm not. So she just starts going, where are you going? It's it's an underpass. There's an sign that says emergency. And I'm going, uh, Lily, there, there's a sign that says emergency here. And I turn right and it's there's nothing there. there. It's like a construction site. Oh my God, there's an underpass. Go to the underpass and go through. It's a walkway from the, the parking lot to the hospital. Lily, I get that. But, you know, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying. I'm driving and I'm looking. <laughs> I totally sounded like that and and because I try to be gentle because I don't want to fight because she's I it's, and look it's my she's miserable in pain and she's miserable she's got to get in there and she thinks we're running late and also uh I I don't I'm trying to be nice and do her a favor but also I don't do well in those situations where I'm frustrated because I can't find it so then I hate myself and I'm fucking <laughs> making her fucking wait and then I want to yell because I'm fucking pissed and so finally the, this is the best part is I'm just like and because I completely forget myself, we're driving. I take three different times. I go around the block and stop and do a U turn and turn around and go back. And then there's the sign that says emergency. She goes, "It's a sign that says emergency." I go, "I've turned there. There's a fucking construction site." So finally, we pull up the light. There's the emergency sign. I go, "Look at this. Tell me if this is the place." She goes, "I can't fucking see." <laughs> That's how frustrated I was. I literally put. A, I stopped in the middle of the street. I go, "Look up. Tell me if this is the sign." She's staring at the floor. She goes, "I can't fucking see." There's there's a phrase called blind leading the blind. I lived it. I fucking lived it. In hindsight, it was even at the time it was kind of funny. But it but I wanted to get so you in there and I'm frustrated and she's frustrated. It was awful. 
and, and then finally, I, you know, it was, and also my, I, you, you're probably like, why doesn't your GPS help? Because he did not. He clearly did not. They moved the emergency, and it hasn't been updated. Right, so it kept sending me to that one yes. spot. It kept sending you back to the place. And, and it was confusing as fuck because there was an emergency sign. So I would yeah. turn there and it's just, and I'm like, well, maybe it's do I drive? Like warehouse entry. Yeah, because again, it's a shitty fucking town. So I mean, it, it, I, I'm like, do I just four wheel through the rubble and eventually a doctor will come out of the shadows? Like, I, I didn't know what the fuck to do. So I'm I'm looking and moving, and then finally I went. I, I go. I played a hunch because I do this when I fucking Uber. I'm like, if I if I don't see the person, drive another block, yeah. because Uber has this thing where you hit current location and it's, you're you're there. I just got to fucking find you. So I literally went up and I went up around a bend and I came around and and it looked as if you were yeah no kidding there were angels singing and there was a fucking a, a crazy fucking trumpet and Gabriel and just a giant hand from the sky pointing because there was the fucking overpass deal. And, uh, and I fucking, then I did fucking four <laughs> circles around the building looking for the entrance of the parking. Because there's one, there's, there's one, one entrance. entrance. And nine exits. So I it's kept so turning weird. into the exits and, and it would go severe tire damage. It's all one way. And you're, and just, and she's got her face down. She's like, what time is it? And I'm like, it's, uh, I, it's one eleven. And she's like, I gotta be in the right one fifteen. I'm like, oh fuck. So I, I did what I could. And then finally we parked and then we had to walk across this overpass and she can't see. So she's staring down at the ground. And then but again, she doesn't want any help. So I'm trying to grab her elbow or her hand. She's like, don't touch me. It freaks me out. It makes me think someone's sneaking up on me. Don't touch me. So I stand away from her as she's walking next to me. And I'm, I, I just let her walk by herself. And then she looks like something out of the ring because she's measured. All of her steps are like totally. She's staring at the floor and just kind of like lurching forward, lurching forward. And she can't look up. And then I saw there's a nurse directly in front of her. And I'm like, I'm not going to fucking say a word here because I got yelled out enough this fucking afternoon. And sure enough, she walks up on the nurse and she just sees the nurse's shoes. And she goes, whoa. And she like stops in her tracks. And she's like, there's somebody there. And I go, yeah, there's someone in front of you. They, people use the walkway. And it's not just cleared for Blindy McBlinderson. And she's just like, oh, okay. And I wanted to take her hand. And she's like, no, no, don't touch me. I'm, it's fine. It freaks me out. It makes me think someone's here. And uh, we finally get there. We take the elevator up. We turn around. We go in. And, and we just, we walk directly into Playa del Rey. I mean, literally, we just walk into Oaxaca. <laughs> Oaxaca is where we went. Because it is just nothing but but Spanish people, Mexicans, and people speaking Spanish, and the whole the people working the desk, the people waiting, and it is just this this it is a gathering of hombres, and they are just there, and we walk in, and we you know of course we we look like fucking uh, you know a thing of white out and a bowl of fucking vegetable soup, and so we go walk into the fucking <laughs> counter, and uh, and then she gives the name Lily von Stupp, which confuses the fuck out of them. That is kind of like what what. Yeah. They got to find that when we have to find a seat. And then she wanted to sit in the sun. She was cold. And, uh, and then the, they came there with a food cart. And I bought like nine things because I was just bored. I was like, literally, I just got to have something. I don't give a fuck. I think I bought a blueberry Danish and a bag of trail mix and, and, some, and like two things of orange juice because I, I could feel the sickness. I'm like, well, I'll just chug some orange juice and get it out of me. And a pinata. You bought a pinata. I bought a pinata. <laughs> I bought some chicolates. I bought chicolates and a blanket. I bought some churros. Uh, <laughs> I bought some cocaine. I certainly bought some cocaine. That was big. You know, when Eddie was with me, I bought tamarind time, candy. <laughs> oh my God! There was a woman sitting across. From Tamarindo. Me her, just pouring it out, eating it. Yeah, that fucking just, weird t- chili powder. The chili powder. Mm-hmm. It was is insane. I was like, she's just eating that, right, Eddie? And he goes, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good but Christ. every time they'd ask me who how he was related to me, I would go translator. <laughs> That's my translator. For Eddie? Yeah, he would just laugh. Yeah. Like, you're an idiot. Well, I did a thing that when we got to the desk, I did the thing Pardo does to me all the time. Like, what, even when we went to the ball game, like, I, we went to the hot dog. Fuck. This is what Jimmy does to me. He, like, we'll go up to the hot dog vendor, and he'll go, uh, you know, I, I'll take one of those Dodger dogs and whatever my nephew wants. <laughs> he does it all the time. So I did it to her. We got to the desk, and I said, uh, all right, so my niece has an appointment tonight at 930. And I literally, like, started to turn to the left and realized I couldn't look up. Nope. I'm like, what? Yeah. So, and she just wrote it out. And I was like, Uncle Mike is here. You're fine. Uncle Mike is here to make sure it's okay. Just take my hand. We'll go find a seat. And she's like, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Well, you also do that thing that you do where you order for women. You're like, what would you like for dinner? And oh, then yes. you talk for us because we don't know how to talk to a server. I know you know how to talk, but you're sick. I know, but it was just so cute. She has an appointment. I'm like, Mike, I can handle this. I have an appointment with Dr. Lou. And I kicked the dirt and I walk away. You did. You did. You got very mad that I emasculated you by trying to take care of my own health care. I tripped over a cow skull and El Chapo helped me up. 
Uh, so. <laughs> But I did that with Jill when we'd go out to order food, and she eventually capitulated and kind of let me do it. But then she'd order a beer, and I'd go, oh, man, I would have got that. And that's my hang-up. It's not hers. <laughs> it's your hang-up. Yeah, because I'm trying to be a good guy. I'm trying to be a nice person, but also I like to, you know, but yes, but, but then. you're trying to be a good guy and pretend like it's 1950, and I don't know how to talk. I'm just <laughs> being polite. Lady. Yeah, the lady would like a sherry. Um, <laughs> the lady would like a roofie. But, but Jill, she would, it was funny, like, be- but also because, look, you know me. I mean, I think we've established who I am. Uh, I'd actually get annoyed when she wouldn't let me order for her. And that, that you know what that was? Healthy. Oh, my God. Oh, that worked out great. Healthy. That didn't contribute to any of our bullshit at all. Uh, as I would just, and I'd be like, ah, man. And she'd be like, and she'd go, I'm really sorry. Oh, my God. I'm really sorry. So then she would, she would overcompensate uh, by apologizing. And I go, you don't need to apologize. But I mean, but she saw me go, ah. You know what I mean? So she felt like she needed to do whatever she could to assuage me, and then I did whatever I could to assuage her, and then we spent an entire relationship trying to make each other happy, even though neither of us was unhappy. <laughs> it was like that thing where nobody was upset about anything, but the we just, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Who's sorry? I'm sorry. You're sorry? I'm sorry. The brain cloud is sorry. Third base. <laughs> yeah. So uh, then we go in to see the doctor, and they make Lily read a fucking eye chart. She's got torture equipment on one half of her head i mean like she's wrapped up like like fucking gunga din and boris karloff she's got her head all fucking wrapped up and the other eye is her bad eye so they're like can you read this eye chart and and lily's she's got a lot of my mom in her where she's just like i don't why are we doing this why are we do what are we doing well it's just kind of standard what we do and you know because they fall into those fucking patterns where they get somebody in the office and they go oh well, we're supposed to make them read the eye chart we're supposed to take their temperature we're supposed to it's all the same bullshit like when i, I went for my ear when i went to the emergency room they wanted to weigh me what the fuck are you weighing me for to weigh me after and see how much wax you took out of my fucking head i mean it's it, exactly it just makes no sense just take the shit out of my ear i'm telling you so that's what they did with you they're like read the eye chart and she's like look at my face <laughs> i did say that yes because you you look like the stay puffed marshmallow man i mean you were all swollen from surgery on one side and then the other side was closed because of the puffiness from the surgery extending over your forehead so you you <laughs> honestly you looked like Nick Diaz after he fought Joe Riggs. I mean, it's just fucking brutal. You just, you, your face is all mashed the fuck up. And they're like, read this eye chart. And it's like, you literally, you should have just taken the thing and just said, okay, F U C K Y O U, F U C K Y O U, F U C K Y O U, F U C K Y O. I can't make out the last letter. Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's absolutely you. It's definitely fucking you. Get the fucking doctor now. That shit drives me crazy. I, I, do not have a lot of patience for reading an eye chart anymore. No, At I don't blame you. At one point, me. I was literally like this, reading off the letters. And she she's doing the t- she's doing the pose of the thinker, I, like with I her head in her hand. Down, and I'm reading the eye chart because I memorized it. At that <laughs> point, I E F C P T O Z. Literally, we all know E F C P T O Z. That's the, that's that's literally the first six. E F C P T O Z. Is that six? I don't know what it is. That might be seven. Um, so I so I sit in there and then. We went into the, uh, then they brought us into the doctor room after, you know, because you're in the initial room, then they send you back out to the fucking waiting room. They and then they call you again. Yeah, but, they, but we missed it. They missed it. And then they had to come find us. Yeah. And here's my favorite part. Like fucking, I, I, we're literally sitting in Guadalajara waiting for a doctor. <laughs> and then one walks out from China. What's that guy doing in that neighborhood? How does he get fucking sent there? What a mix. It reminded me of my little brother's restaurant, Chico Changati's, when he came up with the fucking, the... I tell that story on here. Yeah. Italian, Chinese, and Mexican food all under one roof. It's the fu- and he drew a logo for it and everything. It was fucking awesome. Chico Changati's. Uh, so that's what it made me think of when that dude comes out. He's like the Asian doctor. He walks out in the middle of all these Mexican dudes and he's just he's look and he's yelling for Lily von Stupp, which made me laugh. So he led us into the room and then Lily goes to sit down and then I started playing with the toys and Lily's like, "What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing?" Stop playing. Well, because they had little kid toys in there and those were awesome. Yes, I Why? Well, because I answered the phone first. Sure. Good, take that. Well, because there was a little phone there and I answered it. I know. That's yeah. Very funny. And then I, I started dialing and I started doing it. Because uh, what am I doing? I'm sitting there doing nothing. I'm buying Danishes for no reason. <laughs> so uh, so they went in and they dug around in her head and they were like, you're making progress. Again, the same bullshit where you wonder why they need to see you, but they have to see you, which is good because they have to make sure that shit hasn't I'm happened. Make sure that I'm not lying and there's pus coming out of my eye yes. or it's bleeding or, you know. Well, you are a liar. That certainly can't be dar- well, argued. some people, again... I may plow through, but if something looks weird, I'm going to go to the doctor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know. Well, that's that's what I did but with some my fucking. Plow through and they won't. They're like, oh, that wasn't supposed to have a, a, 
a discharge in yeah. my eye? No, it was not supposed to have a discharge in your eye. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't fuck around with yeah. eyes and shit like that. Absolutely. Um, but then we, and then we bailed. We wound up getting out of there. We escaped, and everything was fine. And then you, you, we've talked kind of every day, you know, a little bit about. Well, I mean, when I wasn't fucking ready to jump off a roof, but uh, actually, 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 that's when we called, talked. Actually, it was when I wanted to jump off a roof. I, I talked you off. <laughs> it was a bad, it's a bad week last week, folks. Um, but how, so, how are you now? Like, if you were to say exactly, like, because you're, I, I got here, I'm in her house, and uh, initially she had a patch on, and then she had to put a fucking soup strainer on her head with medical tape, and now she has a patch <laughs> over the soup strainer with medical tape, <laughs> and she put her glasses on over the patch over the soup strainer with the medical tape. So now, I, the soup strainer looks like a little colander. It's metal that I have to wear when there's any possibility that something might hit my eye. So, like, if I'm what are you wear, saying about me at this point? Well, if I'm going to wear my glasses, I have to put that on so I don't accidentally poke it into my eye. If this gas bubble bursts, I will lose my eyesight. Understood. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. It yes. will blow the whole thing out. Um, so, I have to. Real quick, yeah. we should touch on that because this is a serious, serious injury you had. Because we, you know, no, don't poo poo it because we, we wanted to make it like, well, you know, she's getting all better. She's getting help and all this stuff. Dude, this is your eye. They did surgery on. And if it does not recover, if that tear was too much, we'll have to deal with an entirely different world of circumstance. No, I just won't get my eyesight back. Well, which will make us deal with an entirely yeah, different yeah. world of circumstance. Um, so, I mean, because there was a tear, they had to do laser and scalpel. They had to take all the gel out behind my eye, the viscous, whatever it is that sits behind that is the... When light comes through it, it, you know, can make the vision all that. Did they give you that? What? The viscous gel? No. You didn't get to take that home? No. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't ever want anything from a surgery to go home with me, ever. Uh, at one point, I wanted the cyst behind my ear, and it was, and then they're like, no, we have to send it in to make sure that it's not cancer. It's like, if this surgery it ever, little angel, if, this, little weird thing. if this surgery ever happens to me, I'm going to keep the viscous gel, and I'm going to jerk off of it. Okay. There's not that much, first of all. <laughs> So good luck with that. It, it, it literally, just cry once on your penis and do it. It's the same kind of thing. Just two two teardrops is about what you're. You're a little there. late. So, <laughs> so they, they, they had to cut in with a scalpel, and they had to do laser in there to get it all to work. Then they put a gas bubble in to hold the retina in place. It will take up to two months for the gas bubble to totally dissipate out of the eye. Um, I can't do elevations. I can't drive into the mountains. I can't fly. I can't nothing. I, you know, right. don't, don't go too far down into the basement of a building, you know, kind of thing. And don't go change it. Yeah. Don't lift anything heavy. Don't sneeze hard. <laughs> like, all right, there you go. You, you told me you're sick and I'm like, I'm going to die. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, it's. It's lean forward. You can go back to work as soon as you can go back to work. Um, if you're out in public, wear the soup strainer so nothing can poke your eye. Um, again, my biggest problem is I can't see out of my left eye for shit. So okay. I have to wear close up and far away. The swelling behind my eye has not gone down yet. I can't open my all, eye all the way yet. It's all still bloodshot above where they did the surgery because the surgery at the top inside left of my eye is where I have no vision on the bottom right. The, the thing about this surgery is it's a relatively easy surgery because your eye heals fast. It's a relatively good prognosis with the surgery because if they catch it early enough, they can reattach it and you can see. You may get glaucoma within the next 10 years. You may end up with a cataract in the next 10 years. Worst case scenario, it doesn't take and it tears again. Um, you know, but normally people recover from this pretty well because they've done it for so long. The downside is you can't see for two months pretty right. much out of your eye. But that's a decent trade-off to make for having your eye fixed. Yes. You know, it's, you know, it is, it's always a hassle when you need to wear a cast or any of that bullshit. Yes. But, uh, you know, when Jill got her cast, it was, it was... It is inconvenient. Yeah, she had a cast in her right arm. And I mean, I, I, had, I bagged it up and gave her showers and washed her hair. And, and she was kind of miserable thinking about the fact that for the next two months she'd be in that cast. But eventually, then afterwards, you're going to be fine. Yes. You know, and that's the good news. Where, where it becomes difficult for me is the profit margin in my show is not enough that I can hire people to do the work I do and still make any money right the show will happen it will pay for itself but you know but profit pay, is gone the profit is gone having to pay the people to do the work I can't do right you know I've lost twelve hundred dollars worth of work in four weeks for the first four weeks of surgery 
having to cancel teaching, having to cancel emceeing, having to cancel performing, having to cancel privates, having to cancel. I literally cannot do them because I can't do my job yeah. doing those things. I don't know when I will be able to emcee again. The problem that I was having in Arizona was reading and I couldn't figure out why I was having so many problems as an MC because I've dealt with the dyslexia forever and I'm like, it doesn't make sense that I'm fucking this up so badly. Right. And I realized now it was because I literally, my eyes weren't seeing everything together so it couldn't process it properly. So I was totally screwing up as an MC on Friday night. It really worried me at Arizona and I apologized to the to the producers and they're like, you were hysterical. You, it was funny. It was, you know, it's no big deal. And I was like, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not myself. Something's not right. I don't know when I will be again. I don't know when I will be able to learn the lines to talk again and introduce people properly. I don't know if I will get the peripheral vision back and be able to hold my balance on stage. I don't know what's going to happen at this point. And that's really scary to know that I have two months of my show doesn't make a profit for me, so I have no income coming in, and I have no external income coming in. So that's why having people help me like this is amazing because I literally have no income coming in. For well, months. I knew that. That, that yeah. was why I, I thought about starting the page and, and did yeah. start the page. So it's, <clears throat> that, that is the overwhelming thing. And again, even being able to just pay for the surgery, I have no idea what I'll get charged. I have no idea if it's five hundred dollars or if it's five thousand. Could be no five thousand pesos. It could be. I was there, so I mean that's exactly what it's it could like, be. You know, all of that uncertainty I don't have to deal with right now. All I have to deal with is keep your head down, don't strain your eyes, and get better. Eat right. You know? I mean that's yeah. literally my job right now. And I thank well, as long as you know that, do that job. well, as long as you know yeah. that, because you you are you have a tendency to overdo, and you you like I you'll try to do your yesterday because of the Halloween show and putting stuff together and having them send me pictures on my phone and yeah. I put them out all night long, and by the end of the night, I was like, I have an excruciating headache from overuse of my left eye. Right, my left eye just was like fuck you by the end of the night. Because you do that though, yeah. like you said about the laundry. That's that's an interesting story. When Jill broke her arm. She insisted she was going to go back to work the following week. <laughs> yeah. And the guy's like, you're going to be down for six weeks. Like, it's just, that's just the way it's going to be. I mean, she's got plates and, and screws and all sorts of bullshit. Yeah. And then uh, we, we, I got her home from the hospital. She insisted on leaving the hospital early and we took her home. I gave her a shower. She felt much better. Uh, I go to, we go to bed Sunday night. I wake up Monday. There's clothes hanging up. She did laundry. The day she got home from the fucking hospital. I, I'm just like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? And she's like, well, I can't just sit here. I can't just do nothing. And then, you know, three, three hours later, she's exhausted and she can't move and she doesn't know why. And I go, because you're fucking, you've, you've got a goddamn, you're the tin man. You got a fucking suit of armor in your goddamn arm. That's why. Because, you know, you, you push yourself in this way and you do the same exact thing. You think, well, I can do my laundry or I can go ahead and glitter or I can go ahead and do yeah. some beading or I, I can go and I do flyering. Well, not, which is good. I'm glad. I'm fucking glad because normally you wouldn't know that. Normally you would push yourself. And, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, you know what? Take the money that's been raised. Hopefully we can raise some more. There's a GoFundMe page. Like I said, the link is on my page on Facebook. I'll tweet it out and, uh, and continue trying to help Lily. And, and look, I, I, and by asking for more help, I have that thing inside me where I think I'm a jerk. Like you haven't helped enough. You know what I mean? It's, which is silly. Um, and, and Lily has the same way where she's like, I can't possibly accept more. I felt the same way with the car. I mean, Jamie and Rick started that for me and then everybody started giving money and it was like, holy fuck, this is amazing to me. Thank you. I, and, and that's all we can do is say thank you. It puts you in a weird fucking position where you got to say thank you. But, but you, you have to thank people because people take care of you and, and they I make care, make sure. Thank you. Let me say that. Well, right I, I'm going to get yeah. to that. All right. So, so Lily, she insists on wanting to thank everybody. And a lot of people donated anonymously and a lot of people just sent money and just sent good wishes. And it's set up weird where I set up the GoFundMe page, but Lily can get in there and she can take dough, but she can't see like the names of the people. And, uh, and I don't know, I didn't even know if I could, like, I mean, I went in and I didn't really look around, but I know I was notified everybody, every time somebody donated and I, and with a name, you know what I mean? I would get a name behind it unless it was anonymous. I didn't, nobody would tell me who it was. The point is Lily wants to thank you and she wants to thank you personally. So if you can contact her. Uh, at Lily, L-I-L-I, -L -I, at burlesque411.com. You can send her a note, please, telling her you donated. Not in a clap yourself on the back sort of way. Not in a like, hey, I'm, I'm that guy. But she wants to just send you a nice thank you note. That's all. I mean, it's not, and, and I will tell you this. 
Let her fucking do it, okay? Just so I don't have to fucking hear this shit anymore because she's, she's called me four times going, well, well, how do I send it? Where do I send it? I need these people. I'm, driving, I'm going crazy trying to get in. And I go, will you just fucking relax and get better? And she's like, I'm going to, but these people helped me out and I need them to know that I, I, to, I need to say thank you. And I said, well, say thank you on the show. She goes, I will, but I still want to contact people and I want to send them something. And honestly, when she showed me the thing she's going to send, you want this. It's fucking cool. <laughs> it's nothing spectacular. It's not, but it's fun. But it, it's something that makes me feel, give me the gift of saying thank you. Let me have that second gift. It is important. So write notes to her and give her your addresses and she will send you a little something in the mail. That's fun and uh, and speaks to the crisis at hand and speaks to you guys helping out. Thank you so much for that. And uh, and I look, she thanks you because you're helping her fucking eyesight. I thank you because you've made my life easier by me keeping her around and letting me do this fucking show with her and also talk to her when I needed to talk to her. And Because, I mean, I, I wrote it in the thing. You know, we do the show together, but she's, she's my sister. She is important to me in a way that... Uh, not a lot of people in my life have ever been important to me. She is always there day or night whenever I need to talk to her about whatever fucking crazy bullshit I've gotten myself into, whatever wacky endeavor, whatever fucking heart sickness I find myself dealing with. I can call her and ask her her opinion and ask her and she'll talk me through it and with no bullshit. She doesn't sugarcoat anything and we've had fights today. I almost packed my shit and fucking left. I started to unplug my stuff and started to go and she's like, look, you owe me the respect uh, she didn't say owe me. She said, give me the respect of, of sitting here and talking to me and listening to what I have to say. And you know me. I, tend, I have a tendency to walk away and I have a tendency to fucking bail and I have a tendency to just go, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to listen. I don't want to listen because I feel the only way to be heard sometimes is to walk away. But that's also childish. That's just not facing your problems and your issues. And I get that. I completely understand that. So she and I have an understanding where I, I, she gives me her time, but I have to understand that what she has to say might not jibe with what I want, but I'm willing to listen to her because I respect her uh, and I love her. And you guys sending as much money as you have. Oh, uh, certainly. Absolutely. <laughs> and you guys sending as much money as you did. Oh, you hurt yourself? Good. I hope so. Uh, you guys sending uh, as much money as you have, have have allowed her to be the Lily we've known and the Lily that we've loved and the Lily we will know and we will love going forward in the future. And you've made her whole again, or at least you've tried. You've attempted and you've done the best that you can. And if you can continue to do that, that'd be perfect. Because I'll tell you what, uh, whether Lily has eye surgery or whether Lily is uh, you know on her, on, on her deathbed with her back or her knee, she is still... Your Lily, she is still my Lily, and uh, and I want to thank you guys for keeping her, uh, and because uh, I love her just the way she is. <laughs> I see what you did. I, I, you know what? I kept talking there, trying to figure out how to say "just the way you are." I wanted to because I was going to dress you with it. I'm like, and I just because it came to me as I'm talking, and I'm like, <laughs> fuck, because I love her just. I love you just the way you are. So thank you for taking care of her, and I hope we can do it going forward. You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash The 40-Year-Old Boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash The 40-Year-Old Boy. You can follow me at Instagram.com, Mike40YOB. That's me. I haven't put a photo up since the photo of me and Jess Harnell. I should change that probably. Uh, if you're going to follow me. Huh? I hope so. So uh, I wanted to, because I wanted to take a photo over at the soup strainer and the medical tape. She's like, it's embarrassing. I look terrible. Um, so it won't be that one. But well, I'm sure she'll, she has enough eye patches to pick from <laughs> at this point. So uh, so you guys can get me. Uh, our friend David Hernandez, of course, does all of the artwork for this show. David Hernandez. You can find him at David, uh, facebook.com slash David Hernandez. And uh, you can go to artbydmh.com, which is fucking amazing. A-R-T-B-A-Y-D-M-H.com. The main reason we got to fix Lily's eyes is so she can have both eyes focused on the great artwork that Dave's been creating over the past few weeks. His paintings are on sale. Artbydmh.com, A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H.com. Check them out, please. I would like it, and so would you, because they're fantastic. Ryan Dirks does all the web stuff for this show. Ryan Dirks is available at facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. And, of course, the producer of this show and our sister and our great friend is Lily Von Stupp. You can find her at facebook.com slash Lily Von Stupp, although I don't know. I think she's all full up on friends. Uh, but, but she has so many more friends, but on Facebook they put this arbitrary number on there because they're dicks. But she, everybody, look, everybody Lily meets is a friend. She's like the Will Rogers of vagina. Um, <laughs> all right, that's you. Uh, so you can find her at several different Twitter accounts. That's twitter.com slash Lily Von Stupp, twitter.com slash Hollywood BQ Fest, twitter.com slash Boobdini, and twitter.com slash Monday Night TV. Or no, twitter.com slash MNTs. Uh, but if you'd like to write her a personal, like I said, you should, because you want her to send her this cool ass thank you thing. Uh, it's fun. It's neat. I don't want to oversell it, but it's something really cool. So uh, you can write her a personal note 
at lily at burlesque411.com. That's lily, L-I-L-I, at burlesque411.com.
Want to remind you folks about the Monday Night Tees every Monday night at the Three Clubs on Vine at Santa Monica. Uh, I know the producer of that show, but, you know, she's rich now, so she doesn't give a fuck about that show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's crazy internet rich. Weehoo! Um, no, it still exists. The Three Clubs on Vine at Santa Monica and as well as the Monday Night Show, and that's all cool, and everybody loves it, and it's produced by my great friend, and then I think we just talked a little bit about her and talked to her before the break. Uh, she's the great Lily Von Stupp. Hi, Lily. Michael. Now, in the in the interval, in the break that we just had, you've taken off the medical tape, you've left the soup strainer kind of leaning against your face, and your glasses are holding it on. Yes. Okay. This is all medical procedure? Is this yeah. good? Is this well, what's scheduled to happen at this time of the afternoon? I'm allowed to take it off because I need to also get used to having light back again because you can see it's like I, my eye is just like no light. Break. Yeah, your eyelid closes itself. Yeah. it's Well, and it also, I'm having trouble. I can't. She, she's trying to open her eye and cannot. I see. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure that you you had not forgotten yourself at some point. And you're like, oh my God, my soup strainer's leaning and I'm going to get a fucking flash in the eye and everything's over. No. Gas bubble pops, everything's finished. <laughs> uh, although if that's going to happen, let's have it happen on the air. I'm not going to lie Eddie to you. Eddie wants to film it. He's like, have you asked the doctor if we can have sex yet? And I was like, well, I haven't asked the doctor if we can have sex yet, but I mean, I can have sex. And like, I don't think my eye would explode. He's like, well, we should film it just in case. <laughs> like the sex or the eye yeah i get with two camera shoot why not i wanted to go to my doctor doctor can i have sex now and when he goes yes i just wanted to like take off my clothes <laughs> yeah, let's do it man do this. <laughs> uh, see a sense of humor. well I'm, of course you do certainly i'm disappointed in eddie quite frankly because the answer is when you say uh, i don't think my eye's going to explode eddie's gonna go yeah you might want to think about that a second time <laughs> He knows I'm really scared. <laughs> um, so, all right. Well, so the, the, that's okay. The Monday Night Tees exists. And uh, if you want to watch Lily have sex and have her gas bubble explode in her eye, I guess they were doing that over there next time she can go. Uh, who's coming next week to the show? Not me. <laughs> I, oh my I can't be Wait a minute. Right Is that little ghost from Family Circus going to strip? That's yeah. horrible. Not me. <laughs> um, that actually would be pretty good. Uh, we have a great show on Monday because... Uh, we have a nasty woman act on Monday. This is the, the last day before the election is Monday. You say nasty woman. Yes. Do you think she's a nasty girl? She is. Okay. Yes. We we have a uh, we have Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We oh have, Jesus. We have uh, we have. Uh, is that the notorious R B G? Clinton. It is, that, and that is that is what she's going by during the show. Okay. We also have uh, Hillary Clinton there. We have uh, Elizabeth Warren stripping. We have. It's going to be a good show. That Not sounds fucking. So it's a politically themed show. It's it's a politically themed end of the show. I see. Um, yeah. Oh, so like we're we're blowing it's, off. It's I a, get it. The group number to nasty girl, and it's going to be fucking awesome. And I'm nice. very sad I won't be there. I'm thinking about live streaming it. Okay. I'm thinking about having somebody log into mine and live stream it for me. Well, um, yeah, keep us posted because I mean, I'll, I'll tweet that out and tell yeah, people to watch right, it and stuff like that because that sounds fun. Because you know, so next Monday around eleven ish, check my feed, see if anything's going up. Just keep refreshing. Will Jezebel Thunder be Condoleezza Rice? No. Oh, all right, just no. check. Condoleezza Rice is not a nasty woman. I don't know. I've heard. I've heard recently that I she may be. Bitch. Whoa. No, difference. no, I'm kidding. Um, no, I mean it's it's all a bunch of powerful pro progressive style women that are going to be stripping. All right, well, it's a lot of alliteration, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. it should be fun. I'm trying to think who else is in it. There's there's uh, there's oh god, I don't know. It's, there's six of them though, but it's going to be fantastic. Exciting. Well, all right, so that Monday Night Tease is available. If you can go to facebookcom slash Tease and see all the upcoming acts and who's going to be there, and sometimes Lily live streams and puts up photos because she can't attend. Uh, but you can check that out at facebookcom slash Tease. Become a friend of that page or like that page, and you'll find out all about the stuff that's going to be there in the future and when and how and if. Uh, and also naked pictures of the ladies who've been there in the past, and certainly oh, yeah. nude photos of the women from the future. I don't think they're nude. Well, you can check it out, but I, as far as I know, I think they're nude. I, I, I'm going to say they're nude. Just to get you on board, I'm going to say they're nude, but if they turn out not to be nude, stick around, man. Still cool anyway. <laughs> so tickets are available at brownpapertickets.com. Go ahead and buy those tickets. And again, anything you do supports Lily. Buying the merch. Go to her Patreon page, patreon.com slash Lily. And uh, become a member of that. And, although right now you're just paying her to sit on her ass. But uh, but good for you. Well, I am scheduling a photo shoot. So. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. An eye patchy type of photo shoot? I think I might be wearing three or four of them, actually. Hello. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Let's all use our imagination and figure out how that's going to work out. Uh, so, it's confusing if I wear this because it's my right eye. <laughs> well, you know what? It might, that might be so sexy, you might need to wear the soup strainer in an interesting place. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, oh yeah, that's. <laughs> she, she she just put it there, folks. Just in case you're wondering, uh, I'm taking the place of one of her four pairs of underwear. Uh, so, folks. Not currently wearing any. W- all right, this is I'm afternoon. Trying to stretch it out a day. Uh, the what is I'm trying to stretch what out a day? Not having to do laundry. Oh, I see. I I huh. I thought you were stretching something completely else out. All right, what so. What is wrong with you? Everything. <laughs> yeah, you you believe me. If anybody knows, you know. I do. Testing your eye? Yeah. She has to do this vision test with her hand. Uh, actually, well, it just lets me know where the gas bubble is from yesterday. Now, let me ask you something. As you're doing this vision test, do you wish to carry a log and run up and down the bleachers and think to yourself that you're going to challenge Matthew Modine to a wrestling match? Kind of. So it's more of a vision quest. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Why? Why patronize me on my own fucking show? I went there. I, I made I made a vision test, show? vision quest joke. Oh, you. Get your own show and patronize me. Make that show. Uh, you know what? Get your own show and Patreonize me. Oh, oh we should make that. We should make a Patreonize.com and then you can pay to make fun of people and just go, ah, whenever anybody puts up like a, a clip of their art, just go, you tried. <laughs> Here's a buck. <laughs> Patreonize. I like that idea. Ah, uh, look at you trying. Here's $2. <laughs> here's eight cents for your bullshit that nobody likes patronize i love it i just fucking came up with that dude let's book it forget your dreams <laughs> yeah patronize.com that would be great failures could go there and just get a page pay me to fail pay me to be awful and then they put up awful art and people are like oh it's like for people who never got to have kids no some kid who never got to bring them home some fuck up clay ashtray so they get to see some guy make a clay ashtray on the internet and give him 91 cents that's fucking perfect you're bad oh Here's a buck. I love patreonize.com. Uh, so, yeah, the tease exists. Go buy tickets and have fun doing all that with Lily. Buy t-shirts. And, yeah, buy t-shirts, buy uh, possible eye patches, which will be marketed in the future. Do oh all of God, that the stuff. Oh, my God, the Monday Night Tease eye patch. Those are going to go for a fortune. People are going to love them. So. Oh, my God. Somebody needs to make a Monday Night Tease logo eye patch for me. God uh, damn it. Hear that? On this. I only have seven eye patches right now. Listen, we're at the craft table. Why don't we bang something out ourselves? Well, can you bang it out? <laughs> I don't think I won't. Uh, if I could just get through that pesky soup strainer. I, uh, oh, the tears. <laughs> so uh, that exists. Monday Night Tease is there. Lily's there. It's fun. Buy tickets. Go to brownpapertickets.com. Buy merch. Take care of Lily any way you can. I know and vote. this has become heavy-handed. Well, we'll get to that. We'll talk about that in a second. Because I had a question about next week. I wanted to ask about next week. Um, <laughs> Are you afraid I will not be able to do the podcast because I'm voting? Well, no. I mean, because I'll be voting too. But uh, um, should I talk about this now or wait? Let's wait. All right. We'll talk about it near the end. Uh, the, uh, so uh, what else? Monday Night Tees and then no 2020 20 coming up. Yes. Uh, well, not till fucking November. In, yeah. We had to reschedule because, uh, oh, it is November. It is November. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. In a couple of weeks, 2020 20 will be out there. Tickets are on sale now. It's Barbara Gray. Uh, no, Barbara cannot do it. Uh, Raj Desai and I and me are doing it and I have to get a replacement uh, comic for Barbara but uh, Barbara I think is booked in December she's going to be there so uh, but I have to get another uh, very funny comedian but it'll be me and Raj Desai and I believe it's November 21st yes. uh, yeah that's because I know the 14th is a Monday the 7th is a Monday and then the 31st was a Monday so yeah it's November 21st tickets are on sale now at brown paper tickets the gold star link is also good you get five uh, five dollar tickets to come in and check it out and uh, I don't know if that'll be you won't be there will you not yet no, Lily will not be making her public debut, but I will be there. And uh, Raj Desai, who's extremely funny, he'll be there. And then I have a, a comic, TBA will be there. And TBA, oh, always TBA funny. TBA is my favorite. Uh, so the, right now, TBA will be in town. And then, Much uh, better than TBD. Hopefully she kills it. Oh, yeah. But not as good as TCB. Oh. Got to be honest. Uh, maybe I can get TCB. If I could just get TCB on the bill, that'd be perfect. Uh, although TCB oh, is usually God. busy every day. TCB is usually busy every way. TCB is usually busy it's all right. TCB is usually busy working overtime. Uh, it's not, it's all right either. I think I chili dipped that. So you got to take that. God damn it. You're listening to the 40 year old boy and coming up next, the velvet rope. Let big James and Chewy give you a peek behind the punching curtain. The hell are people doing picketing outside? Ron G, what happened last night? No, I heard nothing. You know, the guy, you know, Nikki's friend, the blind guy. Yeah. What's his name? The guy Wallace. Yeah. You know, I, I always let him in because you know, he's a nice guy. I, I don't know why, you know, a blind guy wants to get in, but whatever. I let him in, no problem. Yeah. Last night, though, he shows up, he, he, you know, he shows up with a fucking CNI dog. You know what I'm dogs? He's a blind guy. Yeah. He wants to get in the club with the dog. I said, you can't fucking come in a club. It's a fucking dog. You can't come in the club. 
So he gets like he starts getting like pissed off. You know, he starts getting mad. You know, a pissed off blind guy. <laughs> yeah, and the dog's starting to get mad. And the dog's barking at me because I guess they kind of sense that thing. You know. Oh uh, yeah. So the guy's getting worked up and it's getting worked up and then next thing I know, you know, goes for me. Just goes for me. You're shitting me. No. So I, you know what I do? What'd you do? One punch. Knock him out. No One fucking punch. way. You right fucking out. knocked him out? out. You, you fucking knocked out of what? <laughs> so I, what is this? Like National Association for the Blind is out there picketing now? No. It's, it's PETA. I fucking, I fucking knocked out the dog. <laughs> Your name's always on the list for the Velvet Rope on the Mike Schmidt Podcasting Network. <laughs> fucking Beagle. Sorry. No, nah, that's okay. Uh, I wish we could have recorded that phone call and had it on the air. That was fucking. That's the. That's some of the shit you got to deal with all day fucking long. Uh, like I said, she handles her business and her phone numbers on online. I mean, it's just she handles the Monday night teas that way. So people always call and they think it's a strip club, and she's had guys call and go, "Hey, are the girls hot over there?" And just, I mean, just people are fucking assholes. So this guy called and he specifically asked about a specific dancer. He's like, "Hi, I just I want to see this girl work tonight." And uh, Lily's like, it's not a strip club, and we're not open tonight. We're only open on Mondays, and I don't know when she's going to be here. And what the fuck, man? My eye hurts. Click. Click. <laughs> uh, uh, you got to get a stripper named Gas Bubble, right? Or Brain Cloud. No. One of those people. No. What about late? Because people would show up and expect them to fight crime. What about Latex Lonnie? Latex Lonnie might happen. I, I think know? so. I, I like Latex Lonnie. I think I'm going to change my name to Latex Lonnie. Oh, all right. That's good. And you start doing like fetish photo shoots on your Patreon with fucking Aww. scuba suits and gloves. Everybody will love it. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. What were we talking about before? Oh, 2020. Buy tickets. Uh, Gold Star, $5 link, or brown paper tickets. Tickets are available there. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. we got all sorts of cool stuff. We've got uh, year one through year seven or year eight available for sale. I think year seven only. I didn't put up year eight because I'm, I'm down a few episodes. I get to contact Max about that. I should probably do that. I'd spend three weeks. Uh, then there's the live stuff. Uh, the, the, your dirt, dirt shirt is available. We're out of mystery shirts. Hey, I'm going to put up a picture. You know, our, our friend Chuck won, he bought the mystery shirt and he got the Mets shirt that I caught at the ball game when I went with Jill for the, the Yankees Mets game. So he got the Mets shirt and he, he took a photo of his daughter wearing the Mets shirt, doing a stew look. And I was like, That's dude, awesome. I go, dude, you got to put this up on the fucking website. And he's like, I don't, I don't do Facebook very well. And I'm like, all right, I'll put it up. Cause he sent it to me. So I'll put that photo up on the Joker's page, but, um, but no mystery shirts left, but your dirt, dirt shirts are certainly available. Um, the live stuff is there. And, uh, you know, the big angry CD, the, the heroes, uh, compilation that Dave did where it's his tribute to all the people that have influenced him. And also the word pimp Schmitty and the misanthropic gangster music collection from the podcast. Go ahead and grab that. That's available now. And uh, with a seven dollar donation to the show, it's free to you. Hear my tricky language there, ASCAP. Um, and then, of course, the the important thing. Well, they're all important. I mean, you know, tweakedaudio.com is still important. Of course, go there and and use our code. It's well, tweakedaudio.com slash forty yob is our page. Uh, they've got autoerotic asphyxiation watches and cock ring, cock ring watches. No autoerotic asphyxiation earbuds. Hey, dude, I don't give a fuck. You want to jerk off and choke yourself? Use whatever the fuck they sell. I don't care what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's you're fine you don't have to fucking narrow your fucking scope just grab anything from tweaked audio choke yourself with the way you jerk off with your viscous eye gel uh and then the amazon link is a big deal you know thank you so much for using that guys you guys are fantastic for using the amazon link the amazon link is available for you to use it helps the show it helps us keep doing what we're doing it allows me to give a little money to to lily and david sometimes and and uh pay my bills and stay alive and stay afloat thank you so much for using the amazon link uh, it's so funny. There's all these bigger shows that use the Amazon link and they donate their money to like wounded warriors and they give all their money. All the Amazon money goes to some cause. And I'm like, fuck, I'm a cause. That's, that's basically it. Cause. Literally. Oh my God, really I mean, I wish I could donate all my, remember when that time we had a fucking, we raised money for Haiti. We did some bullshit where I, everything I sold in a month or two months, we, we, yeah. Yeah, we wound up selling. We donated it, and it was a, it was a pretty good chunk, man. And I still get emails from the World Food Program or whatever trying to get. It was I figured it was for a hurricane. It was some bull. I don't know some nonsense. Hurricane Haiti. Some shit God did. We wound up raising a bunch of money, and we sent off <laughs> money to the fucking guys, and they went and they sent it. But now they keep asking me for money, and I feel you know sad that I can't do it because I gotta you know stock my own pantry with canned soup for the fucking apocalypse. Um, but that stuff's available, so go, please. But use the Amazon link, man. You get stuff. We get money. They get money. It works out perfectly. It's a three-way fucking dance, and you guys come out on the, ahead. You get your cool stuff. Hell, I used it myself this past week to buy a bunch of hair gunk and, and fucking uh, mouthwash. So you, that's, you can buy something as small as mouthwash or something as large as a drone, I've heard. So uh, buy those things. And especially, by the way, let's talk about drones. Our friend Drew Bennett, I don't know if I mentioned him, 
Uh, I met Drew. I went and uh, hung out with him. I may have mentioned this already, but he also he did some uh, back channel stuff to try to show me how to use YouTube a little bit and put stuff up on YouTube. Um, and uh, I don't know if I should say this. I had another listener who was who was doing that, and I've lost contact with him. And now by saying this, it looks like I'm reaching out to him. I'm not. I mean, he was doing shit for free, so who the fuck cares? But uh, but yeah, so I haven't talked to him in like fucking weeks, and it's my own fault because I won't bother him about it because he offered to do something for free, and then he just kind of didn't do it. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, because he's busy with his fucking life and kids and everything else. And now by talking about it, I, I'm going to make him feel bad and he's going to contact me and go, Hey dude, I should do it. And it's like, no, don't fucking do it. Really. I don't want it. But I mean, it was, it was no, but it was nice of him to offer. But then it gets that thing where, like I said, when, when a guy in your car goes, Hey man, I know how to fix car in your neighborhood goes, I can fix cars. And you go, great. Can you look at my car? And he goes, yeah. And then you call him on Tuesday and he's like, Oh man, I'm having lunch. And then you call him on Wednesday. He's like, Oh man, I got a date. And you call him on Thursday and he's like, what cars? Who's this? And he hangs up. New phone, who dis? And you just go, fuck, that's why you that's why you pay for shit to get done. You can't you can't rely on the kindness of anybody or anybody stepping up because you gotta pay. If you pay, you get the fucking service. So it's nice for people to offer, and then unfortunately real life interferes. And I totally get that because it does it with me all the time. But then I I don't want to chase somebody and go, hey, remember that free shit you were gonna do? Keep doing that free shit you were gonna do. Um, so it was it was nice of people to offer. Thank you. That's that's so cool. Um, but our friend Drew, uh, he went ahead and he did he did something on YouTube and he showed it to me. And here's he's he's like it's easy. Nah, it's not that. It was an experiment. It was one of those things just to show me how it could be done. It was like when Chuck, our great friend Chuck, he made me the fucking GoPro video on YouTube, the, how to use it before I went to Kuwait, and uh, and that worked out great because I didn't use it once. Um, did you buy the GoPro? And not use he it? mailed it to me. He mailed you a GoPro to buy a video it. camera and a GoPro, and then he made a YouTube video explaining to me how to use it. And you didn't use it? Nope. I took a million photos because you know why? Because I was taking videos and photos with my phone. You're a dick. A little bit. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I believe me. I'm embarrassed by it. You should send him back his GoPro right now and tell him I'm a dick. I sent it three weeks ago when he oh. bought his mystery shirt, and I sent him some swag in oh. there to apologize. So yeah. Apologize for not knowing how to use a GoPro. Yep, I took care of it. I mean, I and it was so funny. He was like, he was like, you could keep this GoPro. I have another one, but I was. That's the last thing I was gonna fucking do after I didn't use it. You know what I mean? Hey, I'll just keep it. It's a nice you paperweight. Didn't, like, film yourself jacking off with your tears. With it? I can't put that up for people to see. <laughs> Why not? Um, well, that's a good point. Why not? Really? Because <laughs> I, I you think I keep the GoPro in your car. I while you're driving. there's no doubt. I mean, believe me, I I've thought of you all need of this. To get you a dash cam. Yeah, I need to do all that nonsense. You know, people because people even said you should just record when you're Ubering, dude. Just fucking do sound bites and talk, and then put it together as a fucking show mosaic. And I've thought about that, but at the same time, you got to tell people they're being recorded in California. You can't fucking do that otherwise. Um, cause remember the first fucking ride I took that one chick that I was fucking filming her. She's like, are you filming me? And I whatever the fuck. Thing, I can have a thing made for your window. Well, sure. I can put a disclaimer that says, Hey, if you, you, you get in here, you can see to be uh, recorded and all that kind of bullshit. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my God. We can have you be the uh, ass <clears throat> cab instead of the cash cab. And just what? Looking for ass? Well, just in general. <laughs> no, cause you are one. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I, cause I'm an ass. Oh, I get it. That totally makes sense now. <laughs> no, that's no, that's fine. You nailed it. So use the Amazon link so I can uh, hire a new producer who doesn't think I'm an ass. That would be fantastic. And, uh, and you know, buy all our stuff and get all our links and use all of our cool stuff and keep this show afloat. That's the best. Thank you. And now I got to bail, man. I got to go watch game six of the fucking World Series, baby. No, they're going to. They're going to win game six and game seven. It'll be a uh, fucking Chicago so Cubs championship. What? Three two Cleveland, but uh, but tonight it all changes. Tonight is when the Cubs turn it around. As Jake Arrieta throws so a fucking it could end right now. Jake Arrieta or it could be a tie. Well, here's what's really funny. I'm talking about this now before Game Six because it's Tuesday. Yeah. It's before Game Six. By the time this comes out Thursday morning, the series will be over one way or the other. Either it will have ended tonight with the Cleveland win, or it will end tomorrow for sure, is no matter the who Cleveland wins. Cavaliers? No, it's the Cleveland Indians. It's the racist one. Uh, oh yeah, the Trail of Tears one. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, which, and, and so I just think, cause it's going to be cold in Cleveland. I think the Sox or the, the, the Cubs should get their clubhouse man to be in charge of the blankets in the, in the Indians clubhouse. I think that would work out fine. Racism's funny. Not at all. What are you talking about? It happened. Colonization and mass uh, murder is hysterical. Oh, shut up with your, I can see your eye patch getting on its high horse and riding off. Um, so I'm going to go now and watch game six. And it's funny because, uh, in my Ubering this past week, like uh, as a twice this week, I went to San Diego, uh, a, a dude or, or, or twice in like 10 days, a dude pinged me from the, from LA, from the Greyhound station says, Hey man, I'm going to San Diego. Is that okay? And I'm like, fuck yeah. So I took him down there. And then on the way home, I'm able to stop at Portillo's, which is this fucking awesome Chicago food joint in Buena Park. So get this, I fucking stop and I buy food. What I do is I, I buy a combo 
which is beef and sausage with sweet peppers dipped. You get it dipped in the fucking juice. And I bring that home, but I eat a Polish in the car, like a Maxwell Street Polish with fucking heavy grilled onions. It's so goddamn good. Jesus. So uh, so I, I go in the parking lot because I'm listening to the fucking game on the radio. And, uh, and uh, inexplicably, a guy who listens to this show and a mutual friend of ours, Tom. You know, Tommy, I always talk about him on the show. He comes to 202020. He checks in from Portillo's in Buena Park on Facebook. And he's like, and the only reason I see it is because it says, Mike Schmidt's talked about it enough. I'm finally going to give it a, a, a go. And I'm there. I'm fucking there. So I eat in the car and I finish and I go walking into the thing and he's sitting there just him with a newspaper. He's on his way to some wedding or some bullshit. And uh, I just, I walk up and I just sit at his table and he looks up and this is the thing. Not surprised at all to see me. <laughs> Like completely unflappable. I thought he would look up and just be like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" Like it was just he crazy. Never say such a terrible thing. Well, he may, but it, but it made me wonder: Does he think I'm always here? Like I, <laughs> when I'm not home, I'm haunting the halls of Portillo's because I'm so fat and I love Chicago food. Like I couldn't figure out why he wasn't shocked to see me walk in. It was like really bizarre. Because you talk about it a lot. So but I was seventy-five miles from home. Like if you went, if you went like you know seventy-five miles from your house and ran into somebody you don't anticipate seeing there, you'd be like, "Holy shit! What are you doing here, dude?" But he just went, he just looked up and he goes, hey, I'm like, hey, how you doing? And he's just like, yeah, I'm good. Like, it just unflappable. Like, did not care. And I'm like, all right, Mensa, what the fuck? I'll leave it to your paper. Um, so and he ate a beef sandwich and it turned out to be good. I wrote him later. I'm like, was it good? And he's like, yes. Uh, it's hysterical though that you ran into it. So strange, right? That he would be there and he would check in. But that's the thing. So then another time a guy, these people, I had to take them to fucking San Diego. And uh, I, was at, I picked up a guy at LAX, Australian. Oh, hey, mate. And I open it. I go, are you really going to San Diego at five o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah. All right, let's do it. I just got off a plane from Ecuador. And uh, that was a three-hour jaunt. And he sat in the front seat, which wasn't creepy as fuck. And, uh, but at least we listened to the NBA, and, and I didn't have to talk to him very much. But he, he wanted to stop and get beer. Can I get a couple of beers, mate? I'm like, and what? And I'll wait for you? No, I'll bring him in the car. I go, you can't drink in the car. What do you mean? It's open container. It's the fucking law here, dude. You, do I have something in my teeth? No. What the fuck are you doing? My, my, I hurt. Your face hurts. Okay, I'm almost done. I'll leave your house. But you, she's literally, she's running a thumb over her teeth, like in rocking back and forth and biting her teeth and like kind of tapping them. Mm-hmm. And I thought she kept telling me, I thought I had food in my teeth. I'm like, I haven't eaten in a fucking like nine hours. All this across here and it's just, it happened. All right, I'll hurry, I'll hurry up and get the fuck out of here. No, it's fine. No, it's okay. No, no. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Don't get me started. No, we will. So the Australian guy wants to get beer and drink it in my car. I'm like, dude, that's against the law in this country. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, we're not a former prison colony. We can do whatever the fuck you want. Um, but we're we're Americans for fuck's sake. We came here and we killed the Indians, so we wouldn't be able to drink in our cars. That's the way it worked. Thank God. So uh, this, so I, I take him to San Diego, whatever. That, but I was weird that I ran into Tom. All right, yeah. So here's what I'm. Here's my question about the election. I guess I'll throw out to you guys for a fucking vote. Um, and I'll talk to Lily because it all depends on you too. Because I want to see you. You know, I want you to be part of the show if you're up to it physically. Do we do the show on Tuesday or Wednesday next week? Do we the show, do the show bef- before America ends or after America ends? Oh, well, we have to do it before because if if Trump wins, you know everything ends. They, we just, they push the button. The internet's the button. gone and we're finished, right? Yeah. So do I come over after voting and we because talk? We won't be able to put it up because at that point, Russia will run America's internet and we won't be able to put any information out. Because honestly, I part of me wants to do nothing but just sit with food and stare at the TV that day and watch what the fuck happens on Tuesday. Um, then I thought of this, I thought of doing a show Tuesday and then doing a show Wednesday to talk about Tuesday. What do you think of that? No. <laughs> I loved that idea. That idea I totally loved. No, um, we absolutely should do the show on Wednesday. You're right. So we need to record after America ends. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just making sure. So yeah, I mean, you know. Cause I mean, otherwise I could, I could come here and we could do the show and then we could watch the fucking america end together or whatever i mean it's it's or we could do a show before the voting and then we could do a show at that tuesday night after i don't know i i'm enamored with the idea of doing something that includes the election before be and live. after you should be you should be facebook living all day well there's nothing interesting to say all day i mean you know oh idaho <laughs> you know what i mean what the fuck am i gonna say uh you know what hold on we're getting it hold on i'm getting it now it turns out we are calling America for chaos. That's what we're calling in this election. We're calling this election and America for chaos. Because no matter what the fuck happens, there's going to be chaos. Because he's not going to he's not going to validate the result. And it's just if he loses. Because honestly, after this new bullshit that just came up, I don't know what the fuck's going on now. And yet there's 
no bullshit. That's the thing that yes. irritates the fuck out of me. But people who don't pay attention think there's bullshit. No, people who think they pay attention think there's bullshit. I am so tired of pseudo intellectuals. I, I can't even stand it anymore. If you don't want to record with me anymore, just tell me. You're not a pseudo intellectual. Mm. <laughs> I have opinions. I can be that guy. We uh, have opinions, but you don't literally. Yeah, never mind. I know what you're saying. I and look, I don't want to get down this like, rabbit I just, hole. I just posted they might be giants again today. Uh, which one, racist, racist friend? friend? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, I'm getting there again. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's. My uh, friends of friends. I actually apologize to a friend of mine. My apologies. My mistake for posting on your post and oh. talking to your friends. I can't even imagine what it's like for you just trapped in the house with one eye and just seeing everything well, falling apart. And I can't, I can't read enough. Good. I read for ten minutes, and you know, it's like I'll, I'll get down a path on something, and I'm like, my head hurts. I can't read anymore. I just have to leave now because they're all stupid. So I put it out to you, and I'll put it out to you guys. You can vote. I mean, uh, no, there's no vote. We're doing it Wednesday. We're done. Well, I'm getting a vote from them. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> just so you know, no matter what your vote is, we're recording on Wednesday. Again, I want to know if they think there should be a live stream. I want to know if they think what they. Because again, not enough. But not enough people are interested in this. I get it. Okay, not enough people are interested in my opinions and stuff. I don't know about we, because I'm the one who wants to throw it out to the fucking people out there, and I want to see what they have to say, because, you know, these people, they're very nice to us, and we kind of give them a voice. You're pretending you care. It's so adorable. I do. I've been doing that for nine fucking years. <laughs> why, do, why would I change this week? Why would I be the guy who pretended like he didn't care this week, or pretended that I, I just, I can't be honest with these people yet? Fuck. They've been on board this long, waiting for the fucking gunshot. I got to go ahead and do the best thing that I possibly can and try to keep them involved up to the fucking very end. So I got to pretend that they're involved with voting and letting me know. I mean, I can't live stream it. We can't do that. I was going to do a show Tuesday and a show Wednesday or do a show Wednesday. I couldn't figure it out. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but I guess Lily has spoken everybody. <laughs> One eye stepped the fuck up and she's like, hey man, we're doing a show on Wednesday. And because of her health, and I totally understand that that's fine because I got to vote on Tuesday anyway. And I'm going to be far too busy to go vote, to go ahead. And I like, and I'll have a sticker to play with all day. If I vote on fucking Tuesday and then I get a sticker to play with all day, I can't possibly be expected to do a goddamn show while I'm fascinated with adhesives. That absolutely doesn't kill. I, so I'll go ahead and have to step up and go to do the show Wednesday and we'll see what happens. We'll see what's happened to the earth. We'll see if I can somehow fight through the charred landscape to get to meth town to do a show on Wednesday with you because I got news for you. No matter what the fuck happens Tuesday, there's going to be fighting in the streets and fucking shovels and shotguns and it's going to be fucking bananas. And I'm just going to have to wade out into it with my battle Camry and try to make it to fucking meth town so we can go ahead and report what we can report to everybody. You got an eye patch, I'm going to need one because I'm going to be fucking Snake Plissken and you're going to be Mad Max and the two of us are going to have to fight just to podcast in this fucking post-nuclear wasteland because I, I know that's what's going to happen and no matter who... In, get them halfway through a recipe and cut your fucking show in half. That's it. Do an hour about Stew and then bail. Get on a plane. And then come back and revisit it two days later. Because that's the most important stew in the universe. <laughs> Were there noodles or rice involved? Stay tuned! Here, we are playing on a level that most will never see. 